Hey! Welcome, my friends. Hello, welcome, greetings, good day. How are you? I spent the morning yelling at contracts. Uh, they don't yell back, so now I'm here. Where is my song, sir? Where is it? It was here, and now it's gone. Mm. God damn it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Hello. Welcome. To the absolutely number one business show on Twitch. It's good to see you. <laughs>
Why is stand-up comedy one of your tags? You are not funny enough to deserve such an honorable title. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have to... I'll have to, uh... Secede the four to Penguin Burger 69. Because, uh... That is such a creative... Comedic... Name. It's like you're a burger, but a burger made out of penguins. Amazing, dude. I mean... You're right. In, in, in the face of such stupefying, hilarious people like you, I don't know how I could have a title like that. <laughs> Welcome to the Devin Nash Autonomous Zone. I found you from Alpha Gaming and I saw LSF hate, so that I had just had to check you out. Dude, LSF legit hates me. I'm I'm actually like I I've done it, dude. I've I've become more. We've become more. Like, I'm truly beyond the hate messages. It took me like two years, I think, to actually do it. But at this point, I'm good. And so I just I just like I think what did it is I just I know the people maybe better than they know themselves at this point where it's like every message that's like some upvoted thing it's like this guy's a fucking idiot it's just i'm so mad it's just like a person that's like an object like utter nematode troglodyte loser that's like wiping the cheeto dust off their keyboard to desperately push the messages in the fucking broken language that they learn so that they can insult me because they're threatened by the show that I put on. I get it now. I'm like, I'm actually there. Holy shit. Out of all the streams I've watched, yours is the only one that made me laugh and you deserve the stand-up comedy tag. God, well, there it is. <laughs> How do I get over there? Hey. This one. <laughs> I can't do it. Because on my side, left is right. Right is up. <laughs> or whatever. Um, thank you. I really appreciate it. That's an insane way to start a stream. Novo, you're a crazy person. Holy shit. Thank you. Yeah, left is... Okay, this is me going left. In, real, in the real world. This is me going left. And this is me going right. But to you, it's going left and right. But the, how does the mic come from the left? Wait, but is it coming from the right for you? I'm so confused. I don't know. It's not mirrored, I think. I've had five monitors and one is dedicated to your streams. Dude, that's hardcore. You should play Eve. Because, like, dude, I just got the call to war for Eve online, dude. They called me. Not not specifically, but my alliance finally said that we're going to go to war. Uh, if you don't know, EVE Online is a, on the brink of a very large war right now. And we are probably going to fight. I have to decide... Um, I have to decide how much I'm committing. As uh, I am deeply invested in the long term of the Path of Exile League. So I think I will most likely dedicate a portion of my subcap accounts. And then I will leave my caps behind. Uh, for this war, most likely. It's going to be big fun. Uh, this is uh, Test Alliance versus, and Legacy versus uh, Imperium. Which is... Uh, so, like, EVE is like... For people that don't play EVE, EVE is like another way of life. So I will show you what I mean. Oh, thanks for all the follows. This is good shit. So, um... This is a map of known space, not this. This is a statement from Red Eye, but this is a map of known space. And here, uh, this yellow group is called Goon Swarm Federation, and this blue group is called Test Please Ignore. Each one of these is a, each one of these little dots is a system with many different planets in it um, that spans many thousands of light years, and it takes a really long time. So the actual players own this space. So these guys and these guys will be fighting, and that will be assisted by uh, these guys up here, a uh, group called Legacy, uh, and they'll fight them. And then maybe these guys will also get involved, but we don't know. Um, and my alliance is one of these, got summoned to fight in the great battle 
Uh, so I will be committing resources to doing it. There is usually a very large war in Eve about once every four or five years. And this is uh, this is the next one. It's looking like I don't I don't know if anything will actually happen, um, but we'll see. It's really fucking awesome. Yeah, it is insane. It is totally insane. What do you think of the new PoE League? I've heard mixed reviews. I love it, dude. I'm having a great time in the league. Like, like full stop. I really wish I could play more. I, I truly think I will be in this league until the end. Like, or very close to the end. Like, probably a couple weeks off from the end. I'm super enjoying it. It's really fun. I think you gotta... Dude, the, the more that I, like, age up and that I realize... um. Hang on, I want to get some some tunes going. Sorry. Um, this guy. Okay. I, I just want to keep the vibe, you know, the vibe. Th this vibe. Yeah. All right. So the more that I, like, age up, the more that I realize that way too much of my fun in gaming is, like, dependent on, like, what other people think. To the extent that, like, I will actually, like, read Reddit and formulate opinions about things that I didn't even have or I didn't even, were not even like owned or experienced by me. And so um, I was doing that with Path of Exile for the last couple weeks where it was like, I would read something and the Path of Exile subreddit is like, like it's like page seven of Google. It's just a shit show. There's like nothing going on there that's like actually good. It's just a, it's just a terrible place to be. And so I went to like, um, I was like, you know what? For Harvest League, why don't I just enjoy this or not enjoy it? But I'm like, either way, I'm not going to read Reddit and allow that to inform my opinion. I'm only going to go off of what I experience, and I love it. Meanwhile, like my friend Hotshot is uh, George. He rolls a character on Harvest and he quits in two days, right? And he he messages me on Discord and he's like, "Well, I can't do it. Invisible monsters." Um, bugs one guy has an item that's 600 dps in two days and i'm like dude george how much of that actually affected you and he's like well i i saw an invisible mob once and it did some damage and i'm like yeah like like none of that actually even affected you right like we have to we have to like get rid of this idea dude this is it's no good What's the reason for the war at Eve? I think it's literally just content. I I, I think that they're just people are just sick of no, there not being a war. It's like kind of like why we had World War II. It's like we haven't had one of those in a bit. We should do another one. And, that, and so I think it's the same type of idea. Yeah, it's like... That was a joke, chat. We probably had World War II for pretty good reasons. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I know space politics. Have you got any questions? Also, unban me from your Discord. I added you. Ask one of our mods. I don't know who you are. And I don't care. <laughs> and both of those problems keep me from stopping this. But if you're an EVE player, then you should ask. Just just ask one of the mods and say, um, I'm an EVE player. And you'll probably get unbanned. Almost 100%. They know that that's the, that's the keyword. Are they going to stream the war? No, this is not a streaming thing. Listen, l let me tell you what happens. If if you go and watch an Eve stream, okay, you will know boredom like you've never known before. You will feel it in your very soul. It's not like watching paint dry. You will become the paint drying. It is not good. Like, I do not watch Eve streams ever. Never watch Eve streams. Eve is one of those games where we can talk about it and it sounds fucking amazing because it is amazing, right? But when you actually play it, it's it's mm -mm. I'm actually going to be streaming some of the big fights and maybe adding some of the commentary. That's fucking cool that you're doing that. That's that's super cool. I will be one of your two viewers, <laughs> whereas you are the the other one. Because I I typically watch stuff like that. I'll probably be in those fights. We'll see. It really comes down to how much I want to commit to this one. I I don't know. Like um. So, this fight is not... I, I have to deploy very far for this fight, and I don't like that. So, like, I, I don't know how much I'm going to commit. A 
It's not very graphic intensive. No, I run six accounts on one computer, and it's like, no problem. Hey, I found you on YouTube. I say I really respect the content. Thank you, man. Uh, having someone explain multiple perspectives from a BOV into intelligence is honestly needed. Many people are questioning everything and not just taking things at face value is the problem. I truly believe their content is making people think, oh, fuck yeah, dude. How c Look at this insightful comment from where's my dick butt. <laughs> like, it takes a true master to type something like that and then also have a name like that. I'm gifting you a sub. That is a really awesome message. Thank you. I'm really glad you enjoy the content. I'll keep doing more. I'm actually doing a video today because we're going to talk about Brian and Trovo today. And um, it's unbelievable. I have to talk about this, but I do. Because <laughs> this is the kind of thing that um, I have to do. Hey, man, I found your stuff from Ludwig. Oh, very good. Awesome. Welcome. Do you put sugar in your tea? No, blasphemy. No, of course not. What? That ruined the very experience. Some of the best parts of Twitch chat is when someone says something super awesome. You read their name and it's Big Fat Chunk is 69. Yeah, dude. Did you explain poop socking to Ludwig afterwards? I think Ludwig got a... Okay, that's a, that's a meme. But I don't think Ludwig took it literally. Poop socking is when you game at the expense of personal hygiene, which was a very regular thing back in, like, the uh, EverQuest 1 days. I never literally shit in a sock. I'm not sure how that would work logistically. Also, it would probably be more trouble than it's worth. But I would do things like my mom would have to put cheese quesadillas under my door because it was the only food that was flat enough that I would eat it. And because I, <laughs> I was raining so hard at EQ1, that would actually happen. <laughs> You would only eat flat things? I would, yeah, I because, like, otherwise I'd have to, like, get up and open my door, and you could miss the, the, the DPS chain. Are you going to be on the battlefield in Delve? I, I mean, do you think the fight's going to go to Delve? The thing about Delve is that these fucking core systems, so for people that don't play EVE, every one of these dots is a system, and, it ha and it's, it's, it's a huge area of space where you can fight. And, like, these... The problem with Delve and the reason why it's such a fucking AIDS place to invade is because of these um, barrier systems here. Like, I don't know how people are going to break into core Delve. I don't even know if the battlefield's going to get there. I hope it does, because... Um, but it just it just feels like such a uh, insurmountable thing. Like, they're going to perma 24-7 bubble that shit, and then, like, there's... Test Alliance is a bunch of fucking... Like, I don't know. I don't think Test has what it takes to break down Delve. It, it, this section right here, this fight is going to be fucking epic. This, these two systems right here. But here's my thinking. It might be that Goonswarm is actually very weak at their core after years and years of inaction. And it might be that, um... It might be that, like, they have these fortress systems, and then in the in here, like, it's not even that big of a deal. But honestly, if Pandemic Legion doesn't fucking help, then, like, there's no way. You don't break Delve by going through it. You break Delve by going through the Corpse and Alliances. You have to take these systems. You have to take these intake points at some point. You have to. And I don't even know how much shit they have. Yeah, we're talking about EVE Online. Yes, we're talking about, like, this story. EVE Online is currently about to be in a very big war. Yeah. Maybe I should join Vili, dude. I've been tempted to ask him and been like, yo. But, like, to transfer six accounts over and, like, I don't know how many billions in assets, like, 120 billion in assets... It would be fucking crazy. Holy shit. Or more, actually. Probably, like... It's 120 billion just in physical. You guys are coming, too? That's... I just got the order for that as well. Yeah. I think we are. But we have to deploy so far to do it. Like... 
Are we actually booing you? I don't know if we are. It would be interesting if we are. Do you know what alliance I'm in? Or he probably guessed. Can you TLDR what's going on in EVE? Yes, I can, actually. Okay, what we're looking at right now is called a star map. This is the universe of EVE, okay? And um, will Star Citizen ever compete with EVE? No. No. Um, this is the universe of EVE. Every single one of these blobs you see. So uh, here, let me see. I'm going to try to show you what I mean. Okay. So these course, these, uh, these right here, these are called the core systems. And these are areas of space that are owned by NPC empires, okay? And so um, these are effectively not contestable. Um, I mean, you can do a lot in them, and you can kind of almost like theoretically take over the systems for short amounts of time. But they have essentially infinite amounts of, um, of support because these are like impossibly powerful empires. So then everything else around these empires is effectively um, player-owned. And each one of these dots is a separate system, and, and that separate system has stations, it has uh, points of control, it has planets, it, it, it's mass, it's beyond comprehension of a single person to, like, actually think how big this is. And all of these areas are being fought over, um, all the time. But there are usually, like, little skirmishes, like, nothing, like, really crazy is going to happen for a while. Um, and, uh, but, like, now, once every four or five years, there is a massive war, and what's happening is this group, the Imperium, is going up against this group, Legacy, and possibly this group, uh, Panfam. And the idea is that, so there are these um, absolute shitters in the game called Goon Sword Federation, and they've been living un down here uh, for the past like, like fucking five or six years, and everyone's just sick of them. And uh, we just have to, they, they just have to get rid of them. That's what has, that's what's happening right now. How do new group areas get made? So there are mechanisms in the game that allow you to actually claim and take this space and own it. And people can't build in that space and they can't do anything in that space as long as you protect it. It's a very, very complicated thing called sovereignty. Why is the area to the north of PL empty? Uh, it's drone space. So it, it doesn't... Um, this space is like uh, an area that's not conquerable. For, for weird reasons. And also, um, like, there's a there's a race called the Jove, which is like a super advanced race of people, and they have locked down their star systems here. It's part of the lore. Eve is one server, and it's an ongoing universe, and no one really knows, like, why they've locked down their, their star systems. Um, and it's like an ongoing, like, part of the war that they're there. So nobody just, like, nobody just, fu nobody fucks with them because they're super spooky. What's the average age of a player? Probably like 75. <laughs> like, <laughs> around my age. Do the devs expand the universe of the game? Yeah, I would say EVE is one of the last games that truly has an active lore scene that matters. Like the last expansion came out, literally had a race of um, unknown beings that are taking over systems within this co the core systems. And you as a player can side with the, the, that group of people or you can side with the group that's resisting them. Like the lore of this game is actually a huge part of it. And there are, there are like years and years of relationships and betrayals that go on in this. This map is on three dimensions. It it's it's actually like a okay, like it's better to witness it through like 
This is so complicated. Um, this is how it actually looks. It, it is close to this. It's more like a universe. Like this. Um, or like this. Yeah, this is this is more accurate. This is the actual Eve map. So for you to travel from one... To give you an idea of how fucking insane this is, for you to travel without any kind of support from this system uh, all the way down to this system would probably take days. Um, but you'd never get there because you, you would have so many problems along the way. Because there's so many different... Um, there's so many different, like, issues... And I think for one person to explore, only one person has ever explored the entirety of the known universe. And I think it took, what, 14 years to do? It took like 14 years for a single person to do. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. Um... Ten years, yeah. And, yeah, 10 years. 8,000 star systems, and I think this might have included wormholes. Because, okay, because outside of this, outside of this map that I just showed you, there is a interconnected, and, and, and on another dimensional level, there are wormholes that are also full systems that connect these two systems, at the, these systems. They can connect any two systems to each other at random. <laughs> like, this fucking game is insane. Yes, it's, it's similar to the nether, except random, yeah. I exist in many definite yeah. That's why like Star Citizen will never come close to this game. Like this game is like fucking insane. This game is very fun to talk about, but for 99.9% .9 of people, it is absolute dog shit to play. And and that's what I always keep people in mind. Like I have exclamation mark Eve, but for the vast majority of people, like this game is oh exclamation mark Eve is down. Oh my god, I need I need that command back. Who had my who had my uh hang on. That's a command we need to get back. I think somebody paste binned my Dharma bot commands, which is fucking awesome. I think it was John Jaded. Um Okay, we need Yeah yeah yeah. We're gonna add exclamation mark Eve back. I already got it, boys. We're good. That is an imperative command. Okay, there it is. It's back. So easy. That's a good message. So there... I, I think some of the most crazy stories in gaming are from EVE. Like, everything from, like, year-long betrayals to, like, people killing each other in real life over things. Like, it's just fucking insane shit. It's a, it's a whole other world. There is no game like it. What alliance or coalition are you in? I don't say it because I'm a I'm a poop socking Eve player. I have six accounts, and um, one of the at least a couple of those accounts are dedicated to um something called jump freighting. Okay, so it it, it I will try to explain jump freighting real quick. Okay, because this stuff gets kind of crazy. Um, see how each one of these systems is connected by a line? That they're connected by gates, so you can jump from one of them to another. But let's say that you wanted to jump across multiple systems at once, like from here to here, right? So the way it works is if you have two systems, you have a bunch of systems, and they're all connected by lines, okay? Then it would take you some time to get there. But let's say you want to jump to this system from this system. How would you do it, okay? Well, you would use something called a sinusoidal field, okay? A sinusoidal field is a space signature that activates, that allows a a, a ship of with a, with a certain type of engine to be able to jump multiple light years from one system to another. And indeed, if you want to plan one of these jumps, you have to know everything from your fuel costs to um, to triangulating the position to everything, right? And you also have to have a separate ship or account that actually puts you in. So you can you can map these things. Um, like if I wanted to jump from like this system to like this system via like a route, 
I would um I would be able to do it. So I could jump from like depending on the ship and the stats, right? I could jump from like um just a random place in like pure blind. Right, I would have to figure out all of the different, I don't know why the map's not showing up, but I'd have to figure out all the different locations. The total amount of light gears, the total amount of fuel it's going to cost, the max that I could actually jump with the particular ship I had, which was just default. So there's the, so it's going to show you the route roughly. I have to individually jump to all of these systems. I mean, there's, there's these problems here because you can't jump from high, or you can jump from high sec, but, um... And each one of these systems is what's called a low-sec system, which makes it very dangerous to jump through, or a null-sec system. So, uh, as a jump freighter pilot, I can't tell people my alliance because they can potentially track my jump freighter, and they could then hunt me down, especially since I'm a pretty, like, prominent broadcaster. So I don't tell anybody my alliance because I'm, like, I'm a, like, I'm a serious EVE player. Like, I have, I have six accounts. I have billions and billions of assets. I think, like, probably close to... If I really counted everything up and I moved all my industry shit at everything, I'd say I have like pretty close to like 700 to 800 billion in assets. Um, a lot of that's in Jita, but but a lot of it's in Nullsec right now too. Actually, too much of it, and I need to move it back. I'm convinced this stream is Eve propaganda. No, it's not. This, this is an educational stream that we're just talking about something fun for a minute before we start get started. I pasted you a copy of the Legacy Highway Network. Yeah, so what we're looking at right now... Wait, it, it, what we're looking at right now, this is... This is too confusing to explain, <laughs> but I understand what this is. Yeah, this is basically um, one of the alliances is has set up uh, gates, various jump points uh, so that you can jump safely across these systems. This is in order to move uh, capital ships because uh, capital ships are a whole nother hog of like trying to move around and uh, they're fucking crazy. Why do you never stream Eve? Because... Um, I don't want to kill everyone in here as a result of boredom. Yeah, I like I I I actually do care a little bit about you guys and I don't want I like I value your guys' lives. Yeah. How many years have you been playing? My oldest account is 2004. Um my second oldest account is 2009. I think 2004 is right. Yeah. So one of my one of my accounts has 130 million SP. I think. Let me check. It's it, it's a lot. <laughs> a second. How do you look up a player like Eve player lookup? Eve who maybe? I'll check real quick. Um, so I see the Z kill board, but not my my total not my total skills. You weren't joking when you said you had an addictive personality. Let me, I will tell you this, okay? In the middle of World War B, which was one of the biggest fights in EVE Online, uh, that was when I was running CLG. I had to seriously sit down and debate if I wanted to continue. Um, either I wanted to go all in on EVE or I wanted to continue being CEO of CLG. And I'm telling you it was 50-50. I was like, I was really, really, really like, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do. But I almost stepped down from an esports team because I was that into that. And I, I barely decided not to. I was like this close. You have no idea. Like I I I am like I am a, I am like the fucking it's it's dangerous for me. I have to be really, really conscious of it in my life or I lose everything. Do you have your tunes in Evemon? Not right now on this computer. Um 
do you get paid to play Eve? Um, no, but I knew lots of people that made full-time income off it. You still aren't, you aren't the CEO of CLG now? No, thank God. Holy shit. You guys wouldn't trust me for business advice <laughs> like, with how that company's doing. <laughs> like, it's, no, I, I, uh, I left. <laughs> um, how do I see this? I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll tell you guys. It's not Eve who, apparently. I pulled up my character, but maybe Z Killboard tells you. I, you might have to log in to see it. Your agency is mostly dead. How do you figure? Eve board? Now let's see. Oh, yeah, this will do it. Good one. You're the main talent? So you know that we don't publicly mention most of the talent that we sign. We are we aren't uh we don't have publicly on our website. You know that, right? So we have numerous people that are way larger than, than I am. And then even if um even if that's not the case, most of our money is made off of creative solutions. Why is that? Because we just leave it up to the talent. They've said several like you guys just started listening. Several of the people that are um that are signed by us have literally said it on podcasts or things like that, and people just don't listen. We just don't make it a point, right? Like, we're, we're, we don't need to be like an outward-facing agency. Like, I don't, I don't owe anything to BB2 in chat who's from LSF and thinks my agency is shit. I don't give a fuck what he thinks, right? Like, that, that's, that's like totally fine. Um, most of the, for what it's worth though, most of what we do is actually creative solutions. So like, we do, we do big brand deals with, um, with creative solutions and we bring influencers in for those deals. You can check on this stuff is all on our website, right? Like a brand that like if we're working with um, that's what Nerd Fusion Studios is, right? It's a creative solutions agency. Like like it's our agency is only one part of what we do. And you can look at like the brands we've worked with, and it's like yeah, we're like we're not fucking around. Like Um, I'm still trying to find my characters. Is there a search function on Eve board? Holy shit. Why is this so hard? This is like the hardest I've ever seen. The hardest I've ever been. There's like no Eve. There's no searching on Eve board. It just says recently created. How much money have you spent in Eve? Uh, let's not talk about that. Do you know when the interviews are happening for Nerd Fusion jobs? They're happening now, but I will tell you right away. Um, if you have submitted an application for the campaign manager job, you have no shot. I have over 400 apps for that. Um, I, I made the requirements way too... Uh, way too low but for the outbound sales associate i only have three good candidates right now and this is my dr so if you you're going to be dring directly to me which is i assume what like most people want you probably don't know that you don't want that but it's it <laughs> but that's what yeah the outbound sales associate we can find nobody that's qualified for there's so few people so if, if, if you are like a salesperson and you want to do some like really cool shit like then apply for this job we need more people um don't apply for the campaign manager job i have way too many people for that and there's no chance you have no shot to get selected my application got a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, but I'm telling you, there's, there's, you might get selected, maybe, but there are, I'm telling you, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of applications. Type your character name at the end of this. Okay, slash pilot. I uh, just redirected. Fuck it, dude. I'll just log in. Hang on. I can just do that. I'm just going to log into my account and tell you. Yeah, there's, that's the only way it's going to happen. 
If you guys type four stars in chat and then your password, it'll hide the password. Did you know that? Can you give us an example of, of what the sales job entails in this space? I can, or you can literally read the app, which says it. Because I, I literally wrote exactly that. <laughs> I literally wrote exactly what the job does. Like, literally what you will do day to day. I submitted my application with a huge Devin uh, Mill W on the cover page. That was you? Hey, fuck you. My, my business partner actually fucking sent me that. He actually sent me, I don't know if I could scroll up in the conversation and see that because I talked to him so much, but holy shit. Um, yeah, that was actually a thing. Hang on. This is actually a thing. Look at this. Hang on real quick. This is, th that was you? Holy fuck. Look at this. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I didn't do it. I just watched your streets. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. <laughs> Are you guys planning on working with uh, European customers and partners? Um, we can't hire European people, but I am super down to uh, work with European partners. We've done lots of activations for Europeans in the past. It, uh, but we can't hire them. It gets complicated. Okay, hang on. I'm logging into Eve, boys. Uh, can you hire Canadians? No, no international people. Only NA. It is it is an enormous pain in the ass um, to log in uh, to uh, log in. To, it's an enormous pain in the ass to do anything international. Yeah, it's not my fault. Blame Trump. Okay, so my my longest lived character. I'm logging him in right now. Canada is NA. No, it's considered international for the purpose of hiring people. You nematodes. It's 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 not. Okay, my longest lived character was born. Holy fuck. This is... I wish I could show you guys this, but I can't. Um, okay. My longest... Where does it say it? Did it not load it? It should say it in history, I think. Okay, my longest lived character was born 10-06-2004. Uh, 10-06-2004 and has 165,152,414 skill points. That's, that's, that's how, yeah, so I was right, 2K, 2004. 164 million skill points. So that, that account is like probably worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, can fly pretty much anything. And then if I log on to my other account, I think the second oldest one. I was seven when you made that account. Cubity, shut up. Shut up, dude. If you know, shut up. <laughs> 164 million equals 320 injectors at 700 million 210 billion at 2 to 3k yeah yeah so 2 to 3 thousand dollars that's actually not that much holy shit dude skill injectors fuck up the game holy fuck it took so long to get that organically and I can just pay 3k and I can fucking uh, fucking pay to win myself to fucking uh that money skill points really that's fucking shit fuck that 
That's actually dog shit. Fuck that. You can't pay... That's fucking dumb. 3k is nothing. For... No, no, no. Think about that. For the amount of work that I've put in... Okay. Alright. So my second character, this is my main econ character, was born 2009-02-03 and has a net worth of 560 billion, 999 million, 258 uh million 900, 560 billion 999 million 258,736 isk and then uh how many skills do you have 82 million 82.6 that's my that's my second one I'm curious who you fly with uh most often your mom Oh, wait, it would cost more because there's diminishing returns after you have the SP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's not 3K. It's like 15K, right? Right? So it's like 15000 to create a character like that, like $15,000. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that feels better. Will you bang my wife? Uh, my list is too long right now, dude. I just, I, I've got too many moms to bang. I just don't have time. I'm sorry. I know every mom should be treated equally, but I just don't have time for all of your moms. <laughs> What's the conversion of ISK to USD? It depends. It's um, it's dependent on uh, it's dependent on um, whatever the the market demand is. It's, it's just supply and demand. The higher past is diminishing return, the higher its value. Okay, yeah. I would say it's probably worth 10k then. Like $10,000. I I think that's reasonable. Would a tier 3 sub jump my wife and mom ahead in the line? Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, it couldn't hurt. <laughs> I just hang on. I over I over poured my tea and now I'm burning the shit out of my hand as we speak. I was one years old when I made when you made, made that account. That's actually fucking crazy, dude. Villy, okay, Villy, listen. Villy, by the way, Villy is a leader of a very large alliance. He's actually like the person in this war. Villy, if I transferred six accounts and all my assets to test, what would happen? In theory. You'd probably not accept me because of my corp history, right? Because, uh, but you, what would you want to happen? That's a good question. I don't even know. <laughs> right. Because, like, uh, at this point, I don't know. Like, I've been in my uh, my alliance for, like, 10 years. And, like, I don't know. I, it, I don't know. Just wait till your current group deploys so you can move your assets in relative safety. I, I have a jump freighter. I'd move them in relative safety no matter what. As long as I'm blue. Like, it wouldn't be fine. It would be fine. Oh, you see the XQC Ninja drama? No, but I want to I wanna go over it. I'll, I'll do it in a minute. Um, once we stop talking about Eve. So yes, um, the outbound sales associate position. Absolutely. Are we still, am I still on the wrong scene? Oh, I am. Let me go back. Wait, let me log out of Eve first. Hang on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I li I wrote this. I made this smile, okay? It literally tells you exactly what you're going to be doing. A and also, um, you will get an internal document, which I also wrote, that uh, will tell you literally day-to-day -day what you're doing. But you meet with me once a week. We talk about what you're doing, evaluate it and stuff, um, and then we keep going. Hang on, I gotta add Villy as a friend on Discord. It's, I'll ask him. Maybe we're gonna do some some spooky shit. Okay. 
How many hours do you have on Eve? It's not countable. It's not fathomable. <laughs> it is a number so far beyond. Basically, I think if I actually completely understood how many hours I have on Eve, I would probably self-terminate. Because I could have like cured like COVID-37 in the time that I've been on Eve. Like, I could have I could have literally like built an entire empire in real life. Like vampire level wealth if I had done it. But it was it is not how it is, my friends. The two games I have the most amount of time in is PoE and Eve. And I'm honestly convinced at this point that that's all I'm ever going to play. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm there. Like, I I don't think there's good games anymore. With with a few exceptions. Like, Cyberpunk, right? Like, like I will play that. I might even stream Cyberpunk. There's a small chance I'll stream it. Because otherwise, I'm going to have to take a whole week off to play it. So, like, I, I, I think I might even stream Cyberpunk. Maybe. Don't, like, don't pog yet. I might do it. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll be the first game we ever stream and the last. Because Cyberpunk's a different level. And, like, I, I have to take a bunch of time off to to, to to play it, so maybe I just stream it instead. Um, I don't know. Did you get them? Do you like them? Did you get them? Do you like them? I didn't... I did both not get them, nor do I know if I like them. But thank you for $30, Samoa Stefan. Thank you very much. Clap it up. That's an insane donation. On top of Nova, that's a, that's a really good day today. Thank you very much. Did Eve make you a better business person? Bro! I'm not fucking memeing, I promise you. I have learned more about business than Eve than any single one source of information. The end. I know you think I'm memeing. I'm dead serious. I'm disco serious right now. I have learned more about business from Eve than any other single one source. I've learned a lot about business from a lot of sources, from mentors, from things like that. But Eve has taught me the most. For sure. For sure. For sure. Not even a question. Like, holy shit. If, so if, like, like if somebody applied to a job... And I was like, I am, uh, and they were like, they were unironically like, yo, I ran like a, like a 5,000 person corp in Eve and like, I can work for you full time. That would be like such a, like, you could tell me you have a PhD in business and it wouldn't even come close to that kind of qualification. I, I would treat that more seriously than a person that has a master's in business. Any day, any day. You have an MBA, get the fuck out of here. You have a fucking, and my business partner played Eve too. So he'd see, he'd, he'd, he'd think the same thing. He'd think the same thing. Like a hundred percent. What are some of the biggest concepts you've learned? Bro, oh my god. It's so hard to explain, but um there are so many little things that go into running a business. Um, let me give you an example of like uh okay, diversification of risk, right? So in Eve, if you there are three different types of space, okay, and they can basically be represented via um three lines, I think is the easiest way to explain these. So there's um, there's red, there's yellow. That's that's a red box, okay. There's orange, and then there's green, okay. So green is where your stuff is completely safe. It's called high security. Orange is where your stuff is semi safe. It's called um, or it's called low security. And red is called no security or null sec, right? So um, your distribution of assets in the game, right, and how much you have in each place depends largely on like the amount of risk that you want to take. So um, you learn to diversify certain levels of assets or risks among different areas in the game to be able to spread out. Like if I, uh, if something happens to me and I'm in, uh, in, in, in zero security space and we lose our assets there, I don't lose everything I have because I'm not over invested in that one place. And one of the things we talk about in, on this stream a lot is like over indexing, right? Like a lot of streamers, for example, they over index on Twitch. So what that means is like they, they, they don't diversify. Their entire stream is Twitch. And then when they get banned or when something happens or when they're threatened um, or they just run a worse show because they're just worried about their stream, which I think a lot of people underestimate. A lot of people don't realize that like uh, if, if, if you spend your entire time worrying about if your stream is going to get banned, your content's going to be shit. Whereas like for me, 
I'm not gonna like say something so crazy that I get banned. I'm conscious of that, but I'm truly okay if like Emmett Shear decides I shouldn't be on the platform tomorrow. Like I'm totally cool with it, right? I'll speak my mind, I'll run the show that I wanna run, and that'll be the end of it. And that's because I'm very well diversified in my risk, right? I've got I've got equity in Nerd Fusion. I have um, I have uh, separate businesses that I run. I have a, diff a consulting thing that I do. I have Twitter, I have Instagram, I have Facebook, I have YouTube, right? So diversification of risk is just one example of like what you can learn in Eve, but there's so much, there's so much. Holy shit. It's actually fucking crazy. Um, that's like a simple example of like what you would learn. There are other ways to learn um, diversification, but you have to learn these things. Um, the other thing I, the other thing you learn, like I think another thing that like I learned from um, from Eve is very concise speech. So how do you explain something? in a way that people understand it extremely quickly and there can be no room for any kind of argument about it. Like, in business, this drives me crazy. When someone sends me like a fucking eight page, th this happened today. Like somebody sent me like a fucking 80 page dissertation on something when literally the answer was just send them the contract and then see what they say. So you have to explain something. Like how many of you have someone you work with that's like, hey man, did you get that project done? They're like, Four scores and seven years ago, when I was a boy, I once considered doing a work project, and I was amazed that that work project even came to be. And let me tell you, my mother, someone who was very dear to me, well, she was actually involved in it in the beginning, and she was the one that motivated me to be, and I'm like, I just want to know if you have the project done. Shut the fuck up and just tell me, is it done? Like, 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 that that's, runs into me so often. It's like communication in business should be fucking succinct like we should have the the shortest like interaction ever it's just tell me what's going on and and, and then then we're that's it the transaction is completed and i can go back to my miserable life because <laughs> i don't want to like spend like like one of the biggest problems in business and twitch by the way is, is absolutely notorious for this anybody that is at twitch will tell you that this is a huge problem anyone at twitch will tell you this uh, it's gotten better with COVID-19, actually, because but before, the way that a lot of the um, like Silicon Valley type companies are set up are like uh, they they have open office space. So imagine like, and I could this is like one of the reasons why I could never work for a company like this. I can never do it. You're in an you have like 16. I, they even they actually give you desk space down to the amount of inches. And I think it's like 36 to 48 inches of space that you have for like two monitors and your desk. And then you're right next to someone else. And oh my God, I've never worked in this environment. But one of the real, one of the key reasons I left CLG was because they, uh, um, Madison Square Garden was like really, really intent on this. I'm going to try to find the CLG office, like for the shared workspace type thing. Um... To show you what I mean, though any office space would probably do. Yeah, let's just. It's like this shit. This is actually a perfect example. Yeah, this picture right here. I can't stand this shit, okay? Because this jackass is sitting right next to you and they're like, did you hear about how the water cooler broke down? I'm like, shut up! I'm at work. I'm working right now. I don't want to be here. I don't want to look at this screen. I want to go home and look at my other better screen, okay? I don't want to be here. I want to get my task done as fast and as efficiently as possible, and then I want to leave, and I don't want to talk to you. I don't want anything to do with you. You're stinky, and you're loud, and I hate you, <laughs> okay? It's like a Sith level, like, I fucking hate it. And then what they do is they have this, like, meeting rooms, and the meeting rooms are, like, scheduled... 24-7, 365, you go into a meeting room and then you literally talk about nothing for an entire hour. First thing you do in the meeting is you go over what you did in the last meeting. So it's like, and this, for everyone that's in school right now, this is the fucking fate that awaits most of you. Like, unless we have some fucking global pandemic which shuts this shit down, but I'm sure we'll fucking find a vaccine and be back to this bullshit in no time. So you go over the meeting that you went over before, and it's like, well, in the last meeting, we already talked about 
Um, we're going to cover all this stuff. And some dumbass that's trying to go for a promotion or something has some stupid opinion that doesn't matter. And they're going to be like, mm, well, here's some insightful commentary that just doesn't need to be said. And like over and over again, like you're going to go through this. And then, then you're going to get onto the actual agenda. And the only productive time in the meeting, the only productive time in the meeting will be the last five minutes. That'll be when everybody actually talks about what to do okay bob so you're gonna that's if it's a good meeting a meeting a lot of that isn't even this bob uh is this what you're gonna do okay jane this is what you're gonna do etc arcadum thank you for the 10 you're god thank you man congrats on your recent success on your stream i'm very proud of you um and i just i can't tell you so um i've been involved with a bunch of like big corporations and we've literally had like an hour call about the sales call that we're going to make. Like, how should we make the sales call? If they say this, how should we respond this way? If they say this, how should we respond this way? And meanwhile, I am literally there like this. I'm just like the crypt keeper. I'm just like, I'm completely like, my mind is like in another place. And it's so much like 90% of business can be solved via email. Like a bullet point email is like, do this. And one of the other things I like to do is like, whenever I have an employee that is sending me like fucking nine, cause I do a thing called Friday reports, which is like, I have a template that's really easy. It's just like, uh, what challenges did you run into in the business? One sentence or less. Um, what problems, is there anything I can help you with personally? Stuff like that, right? Like, um, people will write me these like eight or nine page dissertations and I will literally just respond with a thumbs up emoji. <laughs> it drives them crazy. They're like, they're like, they're, they go into like an existential crisis. They're like, what is this? D is he happy? Does he, did he, is he sad? Is it, what is it, what does it mean? And then and they'll, and they'll come into this office and they'll be like, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, it's great. <laughs> and they'll be like, fuck. And like, that's the whole thing, dude. It's so frustrating. Oh my God. I will literally, I have a list of emojis. Um, sometimes in Nerd Fusion, I respond with the angry face. It's, it's this one in chat. That, that angry face. I send that sometimes. Um, or I'll send amazing. <laughs> and this is why people hate working with me. <laughs> and why you probably shouldn't apply for these jobs, because this is what you could expect. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever given a thumbs down? No, 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 no. I I, I will explain myself if I get um if I um I will literally explain myself if I get uh like have some problem or something. But usually as succinctly as possible. Holy shit! Another hundred Novo, you gotta chill, dude. I'm. Are you? Oh, holy shit! Thank you very much, man. I do not. I literally don't deserve that. Thank you very much. I feel like I would love working with you. We would we would do end up with one of those silent dances of production. Yeah, that's the thing is like you know, like I don't fuck with my employees. I don't micromanage them. It's whatever. I believe that the the number one thing you should do is you should give ownership to um to the person and that's it. Trust them. Like give ownership, let it go. That's it. Thank you so much, Novo. He says, um, how would you rate Discord's layout? Oh my god, is this really the- oh, oh my god, oh my god, uh, 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 yeah, it's so scary, oh my god, how can I possibly watch my ultra hentai porn if this guy turns around? I hate it. Why does this guy have so many cups? Why- four cups! Five cups! This is insane. How come there's so many cups? I- that- that's ridiculous. This guy, I would immediately, this guy is obviously the, this guy, when you walk into the office and you can't find a cup, this is the guy. R ridiculous. Absolutely insane. Too many cups. Like, yeah, this is crazy. You know what's so fucked up about the, um, the open workspace too? I promise you, the vast majority of these people are literally just JOing all day too. Like, you, you, like that's the crazy thing about it. 
so many times when I walk through like the Riot Games offices and whatever, they're playing Diablo 3, they're fucking playing League of Legends or whatever, because like company policy now is this really, really toxic, like you live where you work type of thing. And I've never opposed any idea in business more than this. I, I hate this idea in business. I hate that we're moving more towards this. Work should not be a place you live. That's extremely fucked up because what happens is you go into this gray area where you're not sure, your mind is not sure if you're working or you're relaxing and you never really exist in either dimension. So as a result, you are stressed out as fuck literally all the time because you're kind of working and you're kind of not working in the same way as a person that does like a homework assignment and you have like Reddit on or like YouTube or you're kind of playing a game and then you get nowhere and you're like, fuck, I'm still stressed about that whole thing. Like you traded, you traded no productivity for all of the stress. It's a super bad trade, literally the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals. And it's like this, this, this is a super toxic mindset that corporations put on us because you set up this like um, expectation that people should live at work and like people like Google are like, oh, here's our nap pod. Here's our ping pong table. Here's our TV break room. Here's our like, shut up. No, like I'm here to do my job and I will do it well. And then I'm going to weave. And I, and like that is one of the reasons why um, I talk to streamers a lot. And they're like, why do you only stream in an office? Because I don't want to work at home, right? Like I don't I don't want to be um, on the clock at home. Sometimes I have to work at home because I've got an extra project or whatever, but mo most of the time I'll stay late in the office or whatever, but I don't have any relaxation stuff here. Like I don't, unless it's, I literally only have POE installed on this computer because I play it during the scuff podcast when I need to zone out because whatever's going on is so fucking crazy. I can't handle it. Like that's, that's usually what happens. Haven't studies show that this actually makes workers more productive? Yes. But, um, oh, sorry. Do you mean like all of the, um, all of like the relaxation stuff? No, 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 no. Uh, worker productivity is getting worse, not better. And I'll give you an, I'll, I'll give you an example of how toxic office space environments are. So I can't name the company, but this recently, I, I, I promise you this is true, like on my merit, a very large company um, just finished a um, really a, a really large study of the productivity enhancements that they got as a result of COVID-19. This is a Fortune 500 company. And they found out that the average office worker um, works an hour more at home than they work at the office. This is because of a combination of commute time and because of actual lack of productivity in offices. Because of the, uh, this is an open workspace company. A lot of uh, a lot of studies show that um, working less hours total, in addition to working in closed office spaces, is way more effective. I hate hour long meetings, and I run mine. It's fifteen minutes long, and I despise eight hour workdays. Yep, there is no reason in twenty twenty to have an eight hour workday. Absolutely none. Like, we're we're not building shoes anymore, right? Like, we're fucking we're thinking about code and problems and stuff. Like, there's no reason to do it. Very few jobs are actually up against the wall of like a pure 40 hour work week, unless you're very high performing and very high paying, like at an executive level, in which case that's one of the expectations. But even then, like it, it's rarely necessary. What about in terms of government? I, I couldn't comment because I don't know the government sector, so I'd be bullshitting you. I, I have no knowledge of that. It could be completely different in the government. Government's weird. Gov government's weird because like the government, you like in a lot of positions in the government, you can't get fired. So you're literally just like sitting there just to sit and there's like, that's just the end of it. I don't, I don't understand. Like there's probably people in chat that could help you more with like the government stuff. I don't know. There's like exceptions to every rule. So there are some jobs where it's like, hey, you've got to sit here for eight hours to make sure this like this. Um, uh, this fucking power plant doesn't explode. 
and 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 like we don't really care if you jerk off but like your job is to sit here and like like the guys at like chernobyl right like <laughs> like there there are some there are some jobs like that there's like front desk security guards or things like that but um for the most part like most most jobs that are i would say like service oriented in terms of or or like creation oriented like in the tech world do not require 40 hours a week and and the vast majority of that time is like jerking off i i've never put a hour requirement on my workers i have had situations where i literally asked one of my employees to make an excel sheet of every hour that they spend because they were convinced they work 16 hours a day and they were producing literally nothing and I, 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 so like, I was like, dude, to pr I, I, you're literally nothing that you're doing is coming out of the company. So like, I don't understand where these 16 hours are going. And this guy constantly felt stressed and that they were working their ass off. And then, so I had them do the Excel document and I shit you not, this Excel document was like, there was like lines that were like one hour helped talk to gamer about their broken chair. And I was like, what the fuck? Like... Are you serious? Like, it was stuff like that. It was fucking absurd. Like, it was very, very clear that the vast majority of their time was, like, completely wasted. I've never seen... I've never been able to break down someone's schedule and see that they are legitimately working, like, 60 to 50 hour weeks, and then they are, like... like and all that's legitimate. If that was the case, I would hire someone else to help them instantly. But every single time somebody comes to me and they're like, I need another person on my team, pretty much every single time, they are... Um, that's not happening. There was one exception to that. At CLG, there was a girl named Julia who I hired, and she's amazing. She works for 100 Thieves now as their director of marketing, and I, I, she was legitimately putting in those hours, and I gave her an assistant because like she was working crazy hours. But that's that's a very rare thing. That's like really that's like really abnormal. Yeah, yeah, we had a talk with Julia on this stream. Did he fix the chair, though? No, he didn't even fucking fix it. <laughs> That's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Julia is like a... like, and, and don't even get me started on esports, dude. You'd be lucky if you get 10 hours out of the average person in esports. It's fucking crazy and efficient. Like, almost none of that work needs to be done. It's ridiculous. Hey, I love your commentary, and I recently started watching. I wish there was more positive voices like you. Thank you, man. That's very nice of you. A gift to you a sub if you didn't already have one. Thank you. All the time, people who say they work 12 hours actually spend half of it talking about person. Yeah, every one of us knows one of these people that's literally like, this is why I, I don't tell you guys I'm busy, okay? There is one time in the last, in 2020, I told you guys I was busy. Um, that was last week. I slept two days at the office. I was working 24-7, and I didn't play PoE longer than like, like maybe even then I played like a couple hours. Like, like that was when I was busy, right? I'm still working quite a bit. But the expectation is that I work quite a bit, right? Like, I, I, like I'm an executive. I, I have to do that. And I, I also run a stream. But, like, I don't, I don't see myself as a busy person. I potato on PoE for hours at a time. I, I, I fuck off. I play Eve, whatever. Like, totally fine. Um, every one of us knows one of those people. It's like, hey, man, how are you doing? And then every time they're like, oh, God. I'm so busy, bro. God, dude, I just got, I got so much fucking shit going on, dude. Like, man, I put in, like, 12 hours at work today. And it's like, did you... Did you? Are you sure you did that? Are you sure it wasn't? I read off. I read on Reddit and jerked off for like 30 hours. Like what was what's going on here? You know, like that's that's the vibe I get from most of those people. I work 40 hours a week at customer care. Calls keep coming. They never stop. So call centers are one of those places where legitimately um, you can work 40 hours for sure. A hundred percent. The, the, like, so low to mid-level service jobs can be that. Like if you're at Subway, you're probably actually working those hours. Yeah. I'm talking about like, that's why I specified like creative or, or like thought oriented jobs is not the case. Destiny is going to get banned. If he deletes his VOD, probably not. I don't know what he did. People are saying he did like a police shooting or something.
Yeah, fully acknowledging that some... Well, that's actually... But that in of itself is a problem, right? Because, like, you can have, like, um, like a software development engineer. Like, the average... So it really surprised me. The average software developer salary in Seattle, I think, is 126K. It's like some... Or that might be the upper limit. I think it's, like, 80K. But the, but the upper limit is 100... Let me try to find it. It's a lot. Okay. Yeah, it's 106K. And that's like actually with 126, that was the number that I got from being high. 80, 80 is low. So right out of college in Seattle with a computer science degree, you could expect to make 100K a year. And I guarantee you that these guys are working way less than the average person in a call center, which is one of the fucked up things about what's going on in our, in our, our world, right? Like it's, it's, but that's just the truth. It's just how it is. I found you from Ludwig's channel and I like the stream. You cover some interesting topics. Thanks, man. Yeah, we're going over um, the new streaming platforms today in a little bit. Email leak? No, these are public emails. MalixiaTV at gmail.com. That's my um, nerd fusion address, but if you send something to that, I won't answer. New streaming platforms? Yeah, you guys know that Brime is going to take over Twitch. So I, I got to do a... It's a really important to do a video about that. Is burnout a real thing? Um, So, yeah, of course it's a real thing. But in my experience, burnout happens when people are in that aforementioned gray zone that I mentioned. So it's like the, the gray zone of always feeling like you're at work, but never actually like getting your work done... That's how burnout happens. When you feel like you're working 12 or 15 hours a day because you're just you're just distracted. You're spending too much time reading YouTube, reading Reddit or watching YouTube or things like that and you're not actually getting your work done. The generally what I structure our jobs to be, like um I'll give you an example. If you guys want to know how crazy this is, right? This outbound sales associate job, the main KPI, which means key performance indicator to dictate if this is a success, is five custom emails a day. If you customize five emails to brands and send them to us to send them out on, on the behalf of NerdFusion per day, you are doing this job. Five a day. That's it. Five days a week, right? That's not hard, but it will take the average person eight to 10 hours a day to do that. And that sounds unbelievable, right? But literally, that's what you have to do. There are other things in this, in this job, like um, writing down some of those deals in the CRM or whatever, updating them or whatever. But yeah, five emails a day is my expectation for this job to give you an idea. Yeah, people say that's it, right? They they, they they think that's simple. It's five custom, well-written emails a day with the highest percentage chance of conversion. That's the job. It's not hard. I expect somebody could be able to do it in about four hours of work a day. And I, and, and we'll pay them, you know, 35 to 60K a year, depending plus commission, which they can make almost double or more off of that if they the commission is where you really get it in the sales job. But you would be so surprised how inefficient people are with time. When I actually put you in front of that job and you've got to do it, you'll spend seven hours doing it because you'll be jerking off on Reddit. Maybe you won't because you're my DR and you'll learn how to not, not, not do that. That's one of the reasons to work for NerdFusion. Yeah, given time, work expands to fill it 100%. I'm a realtor in California. Should I send in my resume? 100%. I um, So what I was saying before is we're hiring two jobs. The campaign manager re will report to my business partner, Matt, who's fantastic, by the way. PhD in astrophysics. You will love working with him. He is an amazing dude. Um, But his you will be his direct report. Um, And I have over 400 apps for this. We don't want any more apps for the influencer campaign manager. For, we have three qualified people for the outbound associate, and that's my uh, outbound sales associate, and that's my DR right now. So if you have sales experience, please do apply. Yes. Yeah, Sevenus is amazing. He's he's literally one of my favorite people in the world. You will love working with him. He's incredible. You will you would want to work for Sevenus more than me for sure, because I'm I'm a shit.
how do we become more efficient with time? So there is a wait but why article on procrastination that it's even though the subject is procrastination, this will give you a very you should read this whole article and it will give you a really it's a really long article, but I promise it's very insightful. People in chat will vouch for it that have read this. And I'll link it to you right now in chat. Um this will give you a lot of the proper mindset to like actually get involved in the task you're supposed to do and avoid distraction. I have read the four hour work week. That was like my Bible on my first company. Why do you consider yourself a shit manager? I think I'm a really good manager. I'm just very blunt and mean. And that doesn't like apply to like, that doesn't do well for a lot of people. Um, I'm very, very, very straightforward. Like I just, I tell people like exactly what it is and I try to move very fast and break things. And that can annoy a lot of people. I'm just, I, I'm not, I'm not nice. Like, uh, like, dude, this is the guy that's telling everybody that he fucks their moms in Twitch chat. Like, this is not the, like, this is like not a very nice person. But what, like, the the thing is, I don't micromanage, number one. This is like the things that I, I, I do do. I don't micromanage. I give you an enormous amount of ownership and I will 100% tell it to you straight. And I will not waste your time. And I, it'll be, it's it's a meritocracy. Maddox, thank you for the tier one. Appreciate that, man. And, and the other thing I'll tell you is like, I legitimately want you to, to grow. Like, I legitimately want you to be the, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I have no ego about it, right? Like, I don't give a fuck if um, uh, if you take my position and you become CMO of Nerd Fusion. Like, fucking go for it. If that's your dream, like, fucking do it. I have no ego about it. Like, I want that person to be the best they can possibly be. What's your retention per year? We've never lost an employee. No one has ever left this company since I've been here. Same with CLG. Not a single person quit the company under my, uh, under, my uh, under three years at CLG or two years at Nerd Fusion. Are they allowed to quit Monka S? That's another matter, okay? We 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 we, we might yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's beyond rare. Mm -hmm. No employee that has ever worked for me has ever quit. Out of a hundred people at CLG, but okay, you want to know another one? I I feel like I'm jerking myself. I am jerking myself off, but this is the stuff that LSF hates, but I love it. Okay, um, another really interesting stat. When we sold to Madison Square Garden and I left, the day after, 85% of the company left. <laughs> including the entire, uh, including all my DRs. I didn't tell them to leave. I, did, I, 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 I In fact, I encouraged a lot of them to stay. But every one of my DRs left. Yeah. No, no, no. Not laid off. They, they quit. They quit. That is why to the the CLG that was working two or three years ago is unrecognizable from today. They're not any of the same people. Can you summarize why the gaming industry is screwed? Just got here and my bot won't load. Can you summarize why the gaming industry is screwed? Because brands are going to view it as radioactive as a result of all of the stuff that's happened over the past couple of weeks. Devin brains brainwashes his employees. Uh, probably. Yeah. No, no, no. We're taking uh, both of these jobs are remote. Both of the jobs that we're doing are remote. Um, I, I'm cool with local people. That's fine. But uh, remote is totally fine too. But uh, only US. Uh, we we can't hire internationally. You could probably start a cult. Maybe. Do you think I should? Twitch chat. Will you be streaming IJEC, uh, IGEC tomorrow? Um, fuck, man. I I think we got screwed on that. I DM'd in... So, I'm on a panel tomorrow for Envin Global, and I wanted to stream it for you guys. Um, but apparently they're charging ticket prices, so I don't think I can stream it. I think they'd be really mad if I did. Let me actually really quickly send the organizer an email. 
Um, I was gonna stream it for you guys, yeah, because I'm on a I'm on the Envin Global panel tomorrow for like uh, Twitch and like the domination of esports or whatever the fuck it is at 1:45, and I really wanted to stream it for you guys, but I think they're charging ticket prices. If I had known that, I wouldn't have gone on the panel because that kind of that kind of sucks. Um. Well, would this be a good time to try to get into the gaming industry since it's radioactive right now and be people uh, apprehensive to apply? Uh, I will give you hopefully something that's helpful. Never make decisions in your life based on external market factors. Just do the things that you're passionate about and go for it and work hard. You can beat like like if you if you're if you're like like if your like entire world is like all I want to do is get into the gaming industry or the esports industry and you like listen to a video from Devin Nash saying that the esports industry is fucking shit and like it's going to blow up like you should still try to do that because like that's your passion and nothing should stop you from doing that and anyone that's smart enough or resourceful enough will find a way to make that work so i don't think you should stop doing anything because somebody else tells you not to let me text nick for you do you know someone at Envin Global? Ask them. Because I don't know why they wouldn't want it. I mean, they're charging for tickets is the problem. But if you know someone at Envin, ask them. Yeah. And ask them if I can stream it. Because it'll probably go out to like 2,000 people. And it would be it would be really educational and cool for people. But I, I'm going to guess they're going to say no. Because um, they're charging for tickets. Is this it? Uh, I don't know. Didn't they post like a, we can probably find it. This, there's a tweet in here somewhere of like, of our panel tomorrow. There's somebody, somebody can find it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Using Twitch to elevate your esports brand. Did you already talk about Brime? Soon. Yeah, soon. Nerd Space Fusion. Why are you black and white? Because I sent a black and white picture because I think it makes me look edgy. Also, um, I, I, oh man, they might get really mad at me for saying this. Don't buy tickets just to listen to my panel. Please don't do that. Tickets are $50 here. And in my opinion, are, are like, that's, I, I think that's unreasonable. Um, if I can stream it for you, I will. This is the, th this is, um, it's not worth $50. I'll just tell you all the stuff I do in the panel. Literally, literally don't spend $50 on this. Like, I, I think it's really kind of messed up that they're charging that much for tickets for like an online event. And I'm going to ask if I can stream it. Contract void? Fuck it, they're not paying me. I'm, I'm there on, I, I'm there on good faith. Like, even if they were paying me, I wouldn't care. Like, I'm telling you the truth. Fuck it. I'll tell you everything that happens after the panel. <laughs> like, it's it's fine. I'm not saying that Envin Global is bad. Like, they, they, they put on really good shit. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to disparage it or whatever. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't buy a ticket for this. Um, I don't think it's worth it. Devin, it took me a minute to find this, but check out the open office of my work. My manager sits in the middle. 500 bits from Snow Stuff. Okay, hold up. Are you at least getting a comp ticket? Uh, I don't think so. Holy shit, is this real, bro? First of all, this is like for fucking ants. I gotta go get the hamburger. Hang on. Oh my god, this is brutal. Is this a good manager, I wonder? This looks like if I had an ego and I thought my dick was like 12 feet long, this is the kind of office I would set up where I was like a god overlooking like my fucking like this is like you remember that game a long time ago? I think it was called Black and White where you're like a god of a world or something. This is uh, this is like that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, to be clear, it's the, it, fifty dollars for the online event is my problem. If you if you pay fifty dollars for like an a, a in person Envin Global event, and like you're going there and you want to uh, you want to like engage with people and get networking stuff, and that's that's like very worth it. Yeah, for sure. And I understand that they can't 
they can't have um they can't have events because of covid but i would have said like it should have been like ten dollars or something do we have to submit a cover letter if you want a job you don't have to arsonist 88 thank you for the twitch prime yeah something about this feels like really wrong to me like this guy literally thinks he's like the captain like this is some fucking expanse shit dude Look at me. I'm the captain now. Mm. I'm really curious from this guy if like his manager is like really bad. I don't know. That feels so bad. This setup is terrible for concentration or deep work. Oh, yeah, for sure, dude. 100%. What advice would you have for someone who's furloughed from their job because of COVID? Um, go look into my VODs. We've done, I, I did a um, stream with the VP of Amazon where we talked about some of the things you can do. The short answer is uh, you can you can get into some quick freelance work. But the, somewhere in there, it should provide some value. I don't actually work in those pods, thankfully. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds like a shit show, dude. Holy shit. Oh, also, um, we're going to do something kind of cool. I don't know if this is actually going to work um, or if it's going to be cool or if it's going to be super lame, but we're going to try it. So I think tomorrow we will do a stream where all donations will go to something special. So um, I, I just felt like everything's kind of been um, sort of shitty for the past uh, couple of weeks. There's been a lot of bad vibes and a lot of negativity. So we want to do something that's kind of fun. So um, what we're going to do, all donations tomorrow are going to go to a special Saturday bonus stream where I am going to light off fireworks with the VP of fucking Amazon um, in uh, in a random neighborhood, and we're going to blow shit up uh, on stream live for you guys and just have a good fucking time for July 4th. Um, and anything that you guys donate will go towards the fireworks, and I'll add some on, my, on top as well. And it should be fun as fuck. <laughs> I just want to, like, run, like, a really positive stream and, like, have some good vibes, and so, like, everybody can come out for that. It's not sponsored. It's just my my, my friend. Uh, I say the VP of Amazon because it's kind of funny to imagine, but it's my friend Ethan. Like, it's like we're... Yeah. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to blow up shit. Mm -hmm. Big shit. So I think we're going to collect donations for that um, tomorrow. And then on Saturday, we're going to have it. I love the Twitch subreddit. Yo, if you guys ever find these funny posts from our Twitch, please link me them. I fucking love this stuff. I got my first big raid, and it was awesome. Yesterday, I was streaming a pretty small game after a dude hopped into my chat and said it would be cool if he raided me with 16 viewers. That'd be amazing. I'd be very grateful. After a minute, I got a notification. Oh, this one's good. This is wholesome, though. Most of them are very sad. <laughs> you got to link me the ones that are like, should I use the A6000 uh, B16 camera or the A70000 B16? I have four viewers. I've spent $30,000 on my stream. Um, what do I do? Like, those are the ones I want to read, dude. This one's nice. Oh, it's in the comments? Wait, why? Do you take nootropics? I've experimented with them and I've never had, I, I, okay. I only had a, there was only one nootropic I ever took that actually made me feel like I was smarter. And it's this thing called host defense. It's a mushroom. I took this one. It's called brain. Uh, not sponsored, just saying. 
Um, well, I'm going to tell you a reason why you probably should. This one. Yeah, this is expensive as fuck, but it it did. It made me feel more queer with the caveat that this gave me a groin fungal rash. I'm pretty sure that I had to clear up over like two weeks with like some fucking. Um, uh, what's that shit you buy? Athlete's foot shit. So, <laughs> if you want to trade your brain for your dick, which is a which is a trade that men have to make, a decision for a trade that men have to make every single day, <laughs> that's up to you. I leave it in your hands. <laughs> but I decided uh, I will uh, just keep with the brain I've got. It'll be okay. I don't want to, yeah, I didn't want to like do some fucking The Last of Us fucking shit where I become a giant mushroom dick <laughs> mm. they sell very high quality supplements and it's quite possible that I uh, I just had an adverse reaction that may not have even had to do with it I don't even know but I don't want to become like a clicker it wasn't like that annoying Mr. Calton, congrats on the 12 months man congrats on your new badge I didn't have to like. This post looks good. Okay. I am in the top 0 0.02 of Twitch in terms of average viewers. Where do I find sponsors? Who is this guy? This is the biggest circle jerk. Is this Ludwig? Well, this guy actually is giving really good advice, actually. This is actually like no no meme. This is actually really good advice. These are really big problems that uh, brands have. Except for the like, this kind of part's kind of pointless, but all this is also really good. There's a comment chain on that post about how offering a discount for marketers is cancer and bad for streamers. How did you learn or acquire your marketing skills? I'm currently in courses. I learned literally on the battlefield, dude. Um, Pay-per-click advertising all the way back to 2004. I ran hundreds of thousands of dollars of ads. So that's how I learned it. You it, like read lots of books, stuff like that. Anybody can learn it. Like it just takes a lot of, uh, takes a lot of time. Net Yellow, thank you very much. Says, let's finish the month strong. Congratulations on a great streaming month in spite of all the fires you had to put up. Net Yellow, thank you, man. You have been incredible. And it was the it was by far the most successful month for the stream of all time, boys, in eight years. You guys made that happen. And I appreciate that. What happened to Ludwig? His CPU burned out. And that was the end of that conversation. Thank you very much. Do you, what do you think is the most valuable skill to learn in business? Leadership is the easy answer, but that's kind of a cop-out answer. Um, marketing is right up there, though. But leadership is the real answer. It's also not that hard. Like, okay, it, it's going to sound like a big meme, but it's not actually that hard to, like, learn about these things. You just need to read books. I, I'm not like... I'm not like this... I come off as this, like... Um smart like dude i think a lot of people like think that i'm like really fucking smart i'm just in my lane on a couple of topics i'm not that smart i read a lot of books though and these are the exact same books you can read like if you want to learn about leadership there's like a couple of books you can read like the effective executive by peter drucker high output management by andrew grover um and extreme ownership by jocko willink you read those three books like you're 75 percent of the way there it's not hard like you just you just need to take the time i think a lot of people don't realize that very, very few people keep learning after they leave school. They, they they leave school, they say, okay, I am now equipped with the skill set that I need to be able to function in life. I will learn everything else through on-the-job training. On-the-job training is dog shit. Orientation on-the-job training is dog shit. You'll barely ever learn anything like that. Most of the stuff that you'll learn is just through experience and through books and through like concentrated like libraries of things. Um, you can read three books and get fantastic with leadership. You can read one book and get fantastic at um, at uh, 
at negotiation, for example, like Never Split the Difference, right? Which is a fantastic book written by an FBI negotiator that can give you a huge insight into how to negotiate. I think a lot of people think that learning these things is way more difficult than it should be. And it's not. It's um like the number, and, and, and I'm just like listening to resources. Like I listen to nonfiction like podcasts and um, sources of learning all the time. But that's also because I try to keep myself at the top 0.001% of the digital media like marketing space, right? You don't need to do that for the vast majority of things. And that's for just like one topic. So I listen to everything from those topics. But everyone can do this. Like you shouldn't ever feel like you're you're gated from this. Like we talk a lot about, a lot about like crazy business shit on the stream. And it's just all from books. It's all from other stuff. Like it's all been figured out. I feel like there are some things that if you don't live them, you don't actually learn them. I think that's true, yeah. Um, but books and reading every day gives you the ability to actually like do that and like actually like enable those experiences because people are gonna give you those opportunities. I don't know, maybe I'll work on a list of books. I don't have a list of books. How much has school taught you? Nothing. I learned nothing about why I'm successful from school. Have you read Sapiens? Yes. You need the right personality and charisma? That's not true either. Um, all of the charisma and personality that I have, I learned. I was a 50 viewer streamer. I, I was a 50 viewer streamer for years. But then I took improv classes. I took. I went to funny school. I took the time. I got there, and like now we're here. And it's dude. I'm telling you, I was the most introverted 16 hour a day. If there's anyone that could do it, 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 it it's like it, it wouldn't have been me. Like I was the most introverted. Like shit. Like I just want to play EverQuest one. Like 16 hours a day. Eve online. Potato. And I'm still a potato. And I'm not even close to there. But I just like self educated. Seriously, like a lot of you might just think like you might have been told in your life that you don't have what it takes because you don't have the right personality or because it's just like genetic man and like it's not it's not intended for you. Like I'm here to tell you that's fucking bullshit, right? Uh, like take it from a guy who has actually literally spent many, many, many dozens of hours interviewing some of the most successful people, not just in content creation, but all over the place. And every single one of them it's a learned trait they didn't like come out of the womb like a fucking amazingly charismatic person because you want to know the truth like you want to like if we're getting into real talk right now i know people want to cover other subjects so i'll get past this pretty quick but th those people that come out of the gate if, if you bust out and you're super fucking charismatic and you're su you have all that fucking shit those people lose they get complacent and they fucking lose because they, they you you take that power for granted it's the very same as like coming from a super rich family. Oftentimes, those people will just peter out. I had a, I had a friend, uh, his dad was the CEO of Netflix and I, I went to college with him. And every single Christmas, that guy got a brand new car. And he, yeah, so sure, he's like, he's got all the money in the world, but he's basically miserable just doing nothing and just kind of sitting in his apartment because he, he had nothing to strive for. He never had the hunger. So like, don't necessarily take it like it's a disadvantage that you have to self-educate and you have to come from somewhere. It, 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 a lot of times it could be an advantage. I'm, I, I actually am a little bit jealous of people that really had the hunger and had to work for it because I never had that. I came from an extremely good family and like, I, like I never learned. My default every day when I wake up is like I wake up and I'm like, well, another day where I have to like uh, play Path of Exile all day, eat cookies and smoke some weed. And that's like my fucking default, right? I had to, uh, every day to this day and every day for the rest of my life, I have to be like, shut up. Okay, it's time to work. Get off your ass. Get out of bed. Put your fucking pants on, boy, because we're going. It's, it's time again to try to save the world. And I have to, like, kick myself back up into gear because I don't have that innate hunger. So, like, if you're feeling like you don't have what it takes, like, I'm telling you, you do. I'm fucking telling you, you do. And every person that I've ever interviewed for success has, like, like they started there. Seriously. Like, but it, it starts with taking responsibility 
acknowledging that you have something to contribute and that you will contribute and then going forward and doing thusly. Like, and that's it. It is the obligation of every person to be like, I have a fucking responsibility to solve some kind of problem and then go do it. Uh, cheer 2500. Oh, holy shit. Zeus, thank you. In esports, do teams or streamers use Crest John? I've never heard of that. What is that? Just wondering if that is a place for me as a programmer for AV equipment. What is Crestron? Crestron Electronics Audio Visual. So this may be something that like people like tournament organizers use, like ESL or something. I have no idea. I can't provide you any value here. I'm sorry. I have I have no fucking clue if 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 they use this. How do you deal with people who put try to put you down? Um. I think that a lot of the... T so I've had like a long fucking ru run with this. And there was a time where I was legitimately fucking disturbed by like LSF, Reddit, like the hundreds of hateful comments. Like I'm at a point in my career now where I can go find negative comments about me right now. And I... I will not be able to stop. I could read them all day. And this is one of the things like um, you see with like people like uh, Lily, right? Like Lily Pichu, where she's self-admitted does this. And it's like, it's such a bad thing. She reads these comments about her, like these negative comments about her. And she tunnels in on them so bad that it affects her career. And this happened to a lot of the players that we had on esports teams where they would come out after an LCS match. They had a bad game. They'd read the Reddit thread that goes on our League of Legends about them. How the person's like, sh sh you're shit. You have to retire. And they would literally like tilt off the face of the earth for the next week. It's so bad to do this. So I have learned that the best way to do it, I think, is... Um, the Joe Rogan approach, which is like, you can post on those social media platforms and you can speak out, but you don't intake, you, you, don't, you don't read them. So like, if I see a thread about me on LSF now, what I used to do is I would click into it and I would read the comments. And it would be, you know, it's invariably stuff like, this guy's a fucking fraud. He never actually did this. He's, had, all of his companies are failing. Like shit, like, like that doesn't do any good for anybody, right? Like there's no, and sometimes it's your own family that's keeping you down. Like. Um, maybe you, you come from like an overweight family and you're trying to lose weight and they'll be the first people I guarantee to gatekeep you and be like, oh, like, you know, oh, you're just trying to do something. They'll, they'll, and like, that's like when you distance yourself, I think, and like you do your own shit and like you get up early in the morning and like you fucking do your thing and you don't listen to them. And in the same way, um, nowadays I'll, I'll go through LSF, I'll see my thread, I'll click upvote. And then I'll be gone, right? And I won't read those threads. But sometimes I still get the negative stuff. It comes through email. It comes through Twitter or whatever. And then um, what I do is I have a video that didn't get a lot of press that answers this question, which is unfortunate because it's one of those self-improvement videos that people don't like as much as my, my news content. What Obama's secret to positivity taught me. And this is a story of when Obama was in a, an interview with Bill O'Reilly, he said that he knows that the people who hate him don't hate him. They hate the projection that they put on him, but they don't actually know them, him. They can't know him, right? They didn't grow up with him. They didn't, they didn't, um, they, 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 they only know of him through these like clips and snippets and like little pieces of information. Anybody that's actually hating you is in pain themselves because anybody, I promise you, that is successful and getting after it doesn't have fucking time for this shit. I don't have time to fucking go yell at other streamers about what they are and aren't doing or whatever. I don't have fucking time. I got my own I got my own game I got to play. And that's what you're going to find about anything else. Like you just brush that off cuz that's always projection, bro. They're they're never coming after you. They're trying to justify some kind of uh internal pain that they have uh because their life fucking sucks. And once you really own that, not just like you acknowledge it logically, but you internalize it, you're good. You're good. That's the game. That's all it is. Now, I like it's really easy for me to be like, oh, just fucking don't read comments, forehead, right? And the reality is, it took me years to get to this point. So it's like, it sounds really fucking easy for me to say this, and I acknowledge that, but this is like the start of the path, right? Like, it took me fucking years to get to this point. And there were times where, like, I was I was so stressed as a result of Reddit comments and shit 
that I legitimately couldn't sleep. I would be, I'd just, I'd just be in a horrible state of mind because like I'd be fucked as a result of people doing that. And like, it does fuck with you, but I feel really sad for a lot of my friends that are, um, I know they're reading comments and they're like, they're internalizing it. Um, a guy that helped me out a lot with this was actually Destiny, Steven, because Destiny has this almost disconcerting ability to like completely disregard any negativity, but there's lessons in that, right? There's like, um, yeah, like <laughs> it's almost distressing how he's able to do that, but there were a lot of lessons that, that was in that. How do you internalize it? You have to truly understand that the people that are making those comments about you are in pain themselves, always, 100% of the time, their wives suck. Cause nobody, um, like LeBron said this, right? Michael Jordan isn't leaving YouTube comments. LeBron literally said that. And what he means by that is like, if a person is leaving a shitty YouTube comment about you, they don't they don't have time to get after it themselves. They're not like, they're, they're not like, people that, people that are really getting after it, they understand the hustle and they are hustling themselves. So if anyone else is like hustling with them, the only reaction you have to that kind of person is good on you, bro. Like you're getting your hustle on, I am too. And you feel that kind of kinship in that way. So all I wanna do is I wanna make, I wanna encourage successful people to be more successful because I know what they're going through. That's the only interest I have, right? So like that's that, and like when you come from that mindset, you know that anyone else that's trying to hold you back from success is fucking weak. They're weak because they are in pain themselves because they didn't achieve or get to the level that they wanted to get at yet. And a lot of them are young, right? And maybe they'll get there later and they'll grow, you hope, right? But the only response to those people is empathy. It's just empathy. You just feel for them. Like, like, dude, I fucking hope you get better. I hope you find your success. I hope you get after it. That's it. And then you move on. The Buddha said that feeling anger about your enemy is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And that's what I would say about it. Okay, we gotta do the uh, XQC shit. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta hear about that. So after I take a week, we'll talk about that. Actually, uh, let me get some water real quick, just so I don't have to get up in a minute. I don't think anybody's here. 
here anymore. Maybe they are. I don't know. I think I'm the last one in the office. Okay, link me the tweets. Link me the tweets. Do you read them or respond to Twitter DM request or Discord DMs? Do you read or respond to Twitter DM requests or Discord DM DMs? I do not because I get... Oh, holy shit. That was another... Okay. Novovu. <laughs> Arcadum, thank you for the 10. Novovu, listen. You could just donate $5, okay? And then I will answer your question. You don't have to donate $100. <laughs> I do not... I do not deserve that, okay? You just donate five dollars <laughs> and i will answer your question all right <laughs> this is fucking insane holy shit jesus christ you are actually fucking insane um do you read or respond to twitter dms or, 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 or requests i do not um because ever since the mixer thing i've gotten over a hundred dms um every single day so i cannot do it i i, I wish i could but I can't do it. So, um, but if you send me an email, I will 100%, like, if there's anything you need. I mean, you've become a huge help to the stream. I will I will obviously take the time to um, do anything I can to help you. And uh, I do try to respond to people, but um, honestly, like, 99.9% .9 of the time, um... I, uh, it's just like either requests for mentorship, requests for something, like people just kind of want something. So I, I, I'm just a, a little bit, you know. Okay, this is the start of it, I guess. Or Shibo links something, but I already lost it. Oh, here it is. Holy shit, what the fuck? This is like the library of fucking Alexandria. Oh my god. Holy shit. Okay, hang on. Jesus, what the fuck happened? Can we chill? Alright. God. Um. He charities for stream. So what's... Alright, maybe we start here? I've never... I've never been paid... What is this about? Start with the XQC clip? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, is it literally right? Wait, where is it? Can somebody link it? The post itself? No, I think this is just his Twitter. Someone will link it in a second. Leaked charity. All right, hold up. Whole wheat chat. It's time for Wait. the whole wheat world. Why isn't it showing because everyone does? You guys know that most charities people are part of are like, they pay these streamers to do it, right? That's not true. Most charities they don't pay streamers because that would have to be disclosed. You guys can't be that fucking stupid. Don't take the money. I mean, you wouldn't know. Why do we rely on XQC for fucking agency advice? I never understand how this guy became an authority on this. Big viewer numbers doesn't actually equal that you know anything. I, the, the fact, I shouldn't have to explain why XQC doesn't understand how business works. It, that, that should not be a thing that I have to explain. That's actually fucking crazy. Holy shit. No, 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 they do, yeah, 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 people do pay for charities, but you have to publicly disclose that you're being paid for an event via FCC regulations. So, so it doesn't happen that often. You would see it if it was. He's, the problem I have with it is that um, he said most, he said most. What if he's actually a business, oh, he corrected himself and the clip is out of context? I see, I see, okay. No. The shimmers that you watch, that they think they do, they do, they do, they do fuck No, you don't, Devin. Trust me on this. Why don't you trust me on this? Okay? Which one of us is more qualified? Fuck you. Fucking cherry days, and they're pretty much all paid for it. <laughs> Source, trust me, bro. 
if you are getting paid for a sponsorship or, or, or if you're getting paid, you have to disclose it. Like, that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the law. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. The regulations changed? What? Crip on paid charity streams. All right, hold up. Yeah, we never really took a deal because uh, most of them were like really sketchy. But what I learned today, and Rania posted a bit about it on Twitter, is apparently people who do sponsored streams for charity don't have to disclose it because it falls under management fees for charities, which is like fucking crazy to me. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Okay, I see what he's saying. Maybe if you are if you are applying for if you are doing a charity for a actual 501c3 then um it is possible that you would not have to disclose that because technically that would not be a sponsorship however if it is for a non 50c3 you would still have to disclose it that's what i that's what i think it is so but i i i don't actually know I don't actually know the answer. That's the truth. They put it under management costs and don't need to disclose it. XQC was right. XQC wasn't right. XQC that said that most people are paid to do charities on Twitch. That's objectively false. That's not true. That's not true. The vast majority of streamers... the, the way And by the way, this clip is out of context too. And it's not fair to XQC. Because what... He did later was he corrected this, but the 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 takeaway that LSF got from ah oh yes the AC one thirty okay so okay like like the takeaway that LSF got from this was that most streamers are being paid to do charity, which makes it seem like streamers are just getting paid to do charities and are actually fucking total shitters that don't run charity events. But that is not true. That's not true. The vast majority of broadcasters are people that do charity streams by like by virtue of like their own goodwill that it, that is not something that they get like they, I would I can't think of a single time in the industry that I have ever seen a person get paid to stream on a charity. I can't think of a single time I've ever seen that. I'm sure it happens, but I've never been involved in it. So, I think that the problem here is that XQC got clipped out of context. Which is just like classic fucking LSF. This is for the talent for a 501c3. Even the talent has to disclose, but the charity itself doesn't have to disclose. I don't know. I think this is really, really like gray area weird. Um, it makes sense to me that the law could be interpreted as usually when we have gray areas like this, the answer is people don't, like no one knows, right? Because like it, it makes sense to me that a 501c3, which is a nonprofit organization, even then, though, it would still fall under the FCC guidelines of, of a sponsorship because you're getting paid. A 501c3, is it is it a literal corporation? This is so hard. You need a lawyer to figure this out. It's 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 really... Googling it won't do it, you, you fuck. It, it's not going to answer the question. This is like a really complicated... Because this has to go into like the interpretation of the law. But I can't just Google this. So 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 this is... I can I can write it out. Like, here's... This is why this is complicated, okay? So... The FCC has a regulation that says a sponsored digital advertisement, right, has to um, has to be disclosed um, as an ad by both the sponsor and the sponsee. <laughs> okay, I don't know if the sponsee is actually the, the word, but we're making that a word for that. Okay, so then. Oh, <laughs> don't question mark me. Fuck off. We're trying, okay? <laughs> All right. Um. So the so a five hundred one c three is not technically, it, it, it is technically a classification of business labeled as nonprofit. However, the person is still being paid. So is it a sponsorship? Question mark. And the answer is, I have no fucking idea. I don't know. It's really, really, it's really complicated.
It, I, I don't know the answer to this question. I truly don't know the answer. Uh, you would need someone who is a big law man who would be able to understand this. And I'm not a big law man. Bottom of page five and six. Okay. Okay. Disclosure requirements and fundraising. What is this? ArcAustin.org? What is this place? Yes. For many charitable nonprofits, the answer to this question is a resounding yes. You do need to disclose requirements. However, many new nonprofits do not fully understand or follow the disclosure requirements for solicitation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Solicitations for charitable contributions take many forms, direct mail, newspaper. Tell donors you are recognized as a tax exempt under Section 501c. Right. So, so 501c3 is just a classification of tax exemption. It's not, you can still have an LLC and be a 501c3. So this applies to corporations and not, I don't know, dude, you need some fucking like 500 IQ Stephen Hawking law guy. I would be willing to guess that you do need to disclose. That is my opinion. And if we were going to do a paid charity stream, I would tell my I would tell my dude to disclose that because but that is an opinion and it is not fact. I do not know the answer to this question to be very clear um because what Crips said, I can see how that would work sort of but what I learned today I have emails through a whole charity deal for a creator I, I understand that Dakota, but the problem is that you can't rely on a single charity to justify it because that that does that make sense why you can't do that? Just because that may very well be a 501c3 that doesn't understand the law. So so just because you have an email list showing that there was a charity that asked to to not disclose doesn't mean that that's the case because that's not the actual law. This is a this is a, okay so and, and listen, okay? My original point not to go hard on XQC my point was, if I don't know the answer, he definitely doesn't. Okay, <laughs> so, so neither of us know the answer. And that's the actual truth. You need, you need big law man. Yes, so my original point still stands. All right. <laughs> I would, if you are an agency, I would default on the, on the idea of disclosure. It seems reasonable to me. Because why would you want to piss off the FTC? Or FCC? I don't even know if it's the FTC or FCC. It's FC something. Hey, and Lanya posted a bit about it on Twitter. Is apparently people the who XQC. do sponsored streams for charity don't have to disclose it because it falls under management fees for charities, which is like fucking crazy to me. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Nice work out there. Okay, I, an influencer just sent me an email. We're interested in four hours of your streaming content. You can choose any charity fund. We'll provide you with a special link on your channel where you can audience can make donations. All money will be donated to charity and selected by you. This is different though. This is this dude, this is actually so complicated. Because this is a specific charity reaching out to pay you for a spot. I would I'm almost certain that would have to be disclosed. If a specific charity reaches out to pay you in order for you to raise money on their behalf, that is a sponsored event. It is really hard for me to imagine that that is not sponsored. That, that sounds very much within the realm of where this would end up. But holy shit, I have called Mizkif. Oh yeah, okay, let me call Mizkif because he, he'd be the fucking deciding authority on this question. Thanks, yeah. All right, <laughs> like, like, holy shit. <laughs> He got offers as well. Chat, it you're driving me crazy. It doesn't matter if an individual got an offer to disclose or not disclose because that individual offer does not beget the rule of the law, of the law, of the United States of America. It's entirely possible. Stop. Hang on. It's entirely possible that the law is different from what people 
think that the law is. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so if a charity is like, you do not have to disclose, and then the charity is wrong, the law could be something different. So we need law man, big law man, okay? We need man who does law, understand law man, all right? Bunch of douchebag streamers, myself included, don't know shit about this. Even though it's my fucking job to know this, I don't. So we need the law man, the big man of law, the biggest law man, okay? <laughs> Holy shit, I'm not even on step one of this shit, and I still don't know what the fuck's, like, okay, like, yes. So that is the reason why, I, now I, I, I totally understand why this is a shit show, because um, nobody fucking understands the real answer to this. Just because it's the law does not mean that the streamer does not check with a lawyer and is not disclosing it if the charity says that you do not have to. Okay. What if the charity sought legal counsel in the matter? We don't know that. And even then, it's possible that a lawyer can be wrong. Okay, so that's also possible that a lawyer gives you the wrong answer, too, because they misinterpret the law. So the only way that this... Why are you linking Spider-Man butt slap original? What the fuck are you doing? What? Like, okay, so the only way that this actually shakes out is, like, you get, like, an authority in the actual fucking, like, FCC to be like, this is the case... But that dude is too busy snorting cocaine and banging numerous amounts of hookers to even have an idea of what Twitch is to be able to give us any kind of clarification on this law. So the real exam the real answer is no one knows. And and, and 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 probably, probably this will never come to blows. Like it'll never be an issue, right? The FTC is Vegas shit, doesn't always enforce their own rules, and is super corrupt. Yeah, thank you, Shelves. Yeah, there it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's move on. So we've seen the XQC quip. I've yelled at it. What is my next thing I've got to do? <laughs> the real drama has nothing to do with the charity discussion? Holy shit. Really? Man, then we are... We are... Okay, we're fucked. Okay, so is the Dr. Lupo thing the response to the quip? Is that, okay, so Dr. Lupo says, XQC stating the majority of streamers get paid. I've never been paid to raise money for St. Jude. XQC responds, the topic went out of control. Some of it was severely out of context. I think most people understood that the top of the line charities with a good charity navigator score don't operate this way. I definitely don't think that most people understood that. When you say something like most streamers get paid to do charities is uh, very... Not good. This is... Okay. Jessica Blup, that's Ninja's wife. This guy always has some trash to say. I've literally never seen a single streamer get paid to raise money. And per FTC rules, if they were, it would be easily known to the public. Keep doing amazing things. Jesus, fuck. I don't know. That's a... Uh... That's kind of nuts. Okay. This is fucking rich coming from you of all people. Incredibly, you found time to half-ass listen to this clip and give no your take no one asked about in between virtue signaling. Holy shit. Okay. Um, is there more? Jesus. Hang on. Um... I was waiting for your response. Enjoy your day, QVC. Happy to see you do another fundraiser in the future since you have so much to say about them. And then XQC responds, of course I was going to answer, sweetie. I was eating breakfast, feeling it for a productive day. Not very relatable. You should teach a thing or two about some reasons. Fundraisers, I know you know a thing or two about raising funds. The Gucci bags don't pay for themselves. I think that's uncalled for. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, there's, this is, 300 bits for the Spider-Man butt slap comment. Okay. Trainwreck said, did I write this or did, yeah. Okay. You know that you're kind of like, 
in the realm of like questionable when Trainwreck doesn't know if he wrote a tweet or if XQC did because holy shit, that's like fucking nuts. Jesus. And then someone responds, Ape Gang. And then there's like 6,000 replies after that. Then what? Ninja responds, you have zero clue the amount of work Jess does for our family and our business. <clears throat> When she wants to buy a Gucci bag, she fucking can because she worked for it. We have donated millions to charity and raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. Stop being a piece of shit. I do think it's pretty unreasonable. So I think that a lot of times women that are in like management roles or family roles, they get, this is why courts, by the way, side with people like Jeff Bezos' wife, right? It's why she got out with a lot of money from the divorce because you it's, it's hard to separate at some point the amount of work that a woman puts in 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 supporting a, um someone else that is like this is a really like like 23 year old like common take um like oh lol like the woman just sits around and and, and like does like buys gucci brags i think that's like a really shit take because oftentimes especially in the case of actually um of of, of tyler's wife she actually did like a lot of the management a lot of the negotiations while while um while Ninja streamed like 16 hours a day. And, and, and I think she was um, she was very significant in that process. So so there may be, um, she had a, a shit take first. It doesn't matter. Just because somebody comes at you doesn't mean you don't take the high road, especially publicly. We, we don't, honestly, like I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna take like the hot take here, but honestly, I think they're all idiots. That's my take, right? We should not be having these discussions on public Twitter in the midst of the worst fucking brand fire in the history of the gaming industry because all this is going to do is it's going to exacerbate the problems where like brands are going to look at this and be like these guys are fucking clowns like why are we going to why, why would we do that like i think this is all stupid like it's all just fucking dumb to do this this could all be handled in dms and like private stuff like not like having the top influencer on twitch fucking call someone sweetie and say you wouldn't know anything about raising funds and stuff like that is like really fucking bad xqc should be better than this 100 percent It doesn't, I, I agree that Jessica came out first, but like the high road request there is like, you were like, imagine if SQC had responded with something like, um, some meme, like, yo, sorry you feel that way. Like, um, you know, hope you have a great day, big smile. And then like, you know, it just like, just killed it with kindness and that's it. It's part of his brand as shit talking people. Cool. Okay. You guys are the same people that say that it's part of Dr. Disrespect's brand to walk into bathrooms. Fuck all of you. How did that work out for him, by the way? If Jessica wants to speak out of her ass, I can definitely do the same. Except one of us is being honest about it. That's in response to this. Like the point in all seriousness, right? The point being that you can't use oh lol, it's my brand as a shield for shit behavior. Because you're judged on the merit of your behavior and not on like, oh, it's your brand. Right? You can't just have a like I, I don't like that idea of like, oh, it's his character, man. Like I hate that argument, okay? Like that uh, like, okay, great. All right, sure. Um like Hi, I'm not Devin Nash. I'm Plastic Bagman. Um, all you all are shit. The gaming industry is shit. Esports is shit. Everything's shit. And fucking every brand should get the fuck out of here. And that's my thing. That's what I think. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, hey, guys. I'm Devin Nash. What's up? Like, what's going on? Oh, what? No, I didn't say that. What? I don't... Th no, that's not me. That's my character. That's my character. That's my that's my character that says those things. Um, yeah, like, Plastic Bagman says those things all the time. That's the thing. That's what... This, this is what Plastic Bagman does. Like, 
yeah, you can't blame me for that. That's my character. Like, you see, like, that's a very, very dumb way to actually look at things. Like, you can't do that. You're, you're responsible by the things that you say by your own merit. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck if you're wearing a fucking mustache, dude. You think this is some Looney Tunes shit? Fucking Bugs Bunny shows up with like a fake mustache and everyone's like, oh, that's not him. And then they fucking keep walking away. They like, they like walk away. Like, like it's not how shit works, dude. You're responsible for your own. Um, you're accountable to your, your yourself. You're accountable to your own shit. <laughs> that's it, you know? Oh, I, the guy's wearing a fake mustache. He went he went that way. It's like, okay, like, come on. Like, the the truth is it's just bad for the whole industry. I gifted a sub to Plastic Bagman. Thank you. I don't think that guy deserves a sub for the shit he says. You know what I mean? You know what one of the other problems... Like, SQC knows that I can say these things about him, and I can still, like, I, I'll, I'll go back and I'll say something maybe a couple days later about, like, why he's, like, a like a, a very good influencer overall and, like, a really positive, like, thing on the platform, right? Which is, like, my, my overall take. The thing is that, like, what people don't, uh, what, what the viewers don't, I think viewers have a problem with this, and I saw this first happen with Fed, and it started to get me thinking about it. You will so easily defend one of the your favorite content creators when if a rando like vice president went down for the same thing in a fucking fortune 500 you would burn that person to the stake 100 percent. in the same way that like if some rando said this shit you do the exact same thing but because it's xqc and you watch him every day and you have a tier three fucking sub and like it's whatever like you don't hold them accountable and that's unfair you need to hold people accountable by the merit of of, of what they say not who not like not like whatever like dedication you have to them. It doesn't make XQC a bad person. He just he just kind of went over the line here and, and like like they shouldn't have slung shit at each other. That's it. Hi, I'm a huge fan of your YouTube channel. Uh, I can't answer that question, to RSQL. That's like drama shit. I I'm not gonna tell. I'm not gonna tell Train like who he should or who you shouldn't platform. So usually when I um, start thinking about things like this, where I end up is like what we should usually default towards is professionalism. Professionalism gets underestimated because everyone, and, and particularly everyone in this thread. Is a is a massive representation of like what live streaming is, okay? And people like it's okay to do like memes and stuff like that, but this is not memes. This is like actual shit slinging back and forth. And when this happens, there are a lot of companies in the space that then just don't take us seriously because they're like, okay, like these guys are a bunch of kids just like slinging shit. Like we're not gonna, they're not gonna do any serious advertising. Like they're not gonna do anything. And that's 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 a that's a negative for the industry overall. And it's like. You can have these conversations, you can meme, you can like fuck around and whatever. And there's like a way to do it. But when it's like, we're in, like, we're in, like, when XQC is in full sentence mode, like actually typing like periods and shit, like, okay, we're in trouble. Like, we need to like show out. Um, this kind of stuff, like, it's very clear you don't respect, like, of course it becomes a sexism thing, right? Because it kind of is. Um, it's very clear you don't respect women or any, or really anyone. This is, I've heard you spew, if you want to be sexist like this and act like I'm married into a sex successful man, it makes me a do-nothing mooching woman. Um, that's your choice, that kind of person. Um, and then, like, Ninja's brother, bro, easy on the sexism. It's 2020. Calling women sweetie and refusing to admit that they work is not the best move morally or whatever you do. Trainwreck is just like, what did Trainwreck say? Um... Only Destiny and Slasher can pull this card. Nice try. Yeah. You don't respect him when you continuously talk trash about him on your stream. Second, I said you talk trash. True statement. It felt important to let people know I've never been, I've never heard of someone being paid. Damn, the manager is about to come out now. Okay. We're in full, we're in full caps now. The lack of self-awareness is insane. Your husband's an icon of our sphere. This has nothing to do with you being a, uh, a, a woman. 
How dare you use sexism as such a trivial interaction? I'm using sexism because I refuse to be called sweetie and challenge a big gaming figure telling me I don't work or deserve what I have. That's what's wrong with gaming and what women deal with all the time. Slicker Ninja made you. Holy shit. This is, yeah, like. Oh, he deleted that. <laughs> okay. Um, Ninja to SQC. In your own words, you literally said she does nothing all day. Called her sweetie when she is, in fact, not your sweetie. Not to mention, she's tried to reach out privately talk to you about this. This calls for XQC, Adept versus Ninja J Ghosty, 2v2, BO3 for charity. Alinity, this is an easy bet. Team Ninja loses easily. Ninja, don't you have another cat to abuse? <sighs> I'm just, I'm telling you right now that like there are brands that are like would give money to the space that are looking at this fucking thread like these fucking idiots. Like let's go advertise on, on fucking Google. Fuck these guys. Jesus Christ. Bad for brands and good for viewers? No, you don't understand. It's bad for both. Bad for brands is bad for viewers. You just don't understand why. I was joking too. LOLOMG can't take a joke. Come on. Haha, oh, ha, geez. You have no class. It's only a playful joke. You have to be rude like this. Pretty shameful, dude. Ninja is the most toxic person in gaming. Fanatic, I think that the vodka in your ma cat's mouth was more toxic. Jesus fuck, dude. This is some fucking high school shit. Let me start off by saying I'm a huge fan. I've been offered two deal. Oh, Ms. Kiff. Okay. I've been two offered two deals in the past 30 days to do sponsor of charities for 20 gay. I agree this XQCOW guy is toxic, but he's a thousand percent right. Friends I know didn't need to put ad in the title, but recently the FTC changed it. Um again, I I, I don't think that Ms. Kiff is an authority on this. I, I'm tempted to just actually go like find out the answer and like contact our law firm and like have them look into it. Because we have an entertainment law firm, they'd be able to find the answer to this. But by the time I do and they find it out, like, um, w this this drama will be long gone. People will forget about this in like a day. Those are billable hours. Don't do it. Yeah, I, I, they are billable hours. I mean, I don't I don't really, I mean, I don't know. It's like probably worth finding out. What the fuck? Hang on. Like, by the time I get an answer from our law firm and uh, make a video about it, it'll be like a week. And I think it's not worth it. Here's a resource you could use that the military use for charities during their combined federal campaign where charities can use solicit military members once a year. It's not that it's not useful. It's just that, like, I, it's not going to give us the answer. Can you explain why bad for brands is bad for viewers? It's super complicated. Um, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Like, I mean, if people care, I'll get into it. But, but like, we can finish this. You guys care why brand being brands are bad for viewers? If you care, I'll explain it. But if you don't, like, 
and it's whatever we'll keep going okay all right um no okay <laughs> um a lot of people do so i'll explain it real I'll, I'll explain a short version of it okay so um everything in the space which is twitch live streaming etc right relies on revenue advertising dollars brand support right which includes streamers um those streamers are a little bit different because streamers rely on community support as well however twitch itself its ability to expand and its ability to earn revenue and advertising dollars depends on the brand support if without without brands and without companies partnering with these uh partnering with our space the space is not possible to run in its current iteration which eventually translates into being bad for viewers via trickle down so that translates into less opportunity for streamers less income for streamers um less ability for twitch to like expand into new verticals and eventually translates into less viewers and and, and bad for viewers if that makes sense it's a really simple way to explain it because some people don't care Basically, there's like a thousand different ways that it gets affected. This is the exact same issue that YouTube, Facebook, and all social media has. Yes, that's right. And munition sums it up. <laughs> that's that's pretty great okay i'm down but <laughs> this is a good ass meme i love how it's in the background too i don't i don't think that i'm going to bother um i don't think that i'm going to bother like answering this because by the time that i do it won't be relevant and I can't be fucked, dude. I have so much work to do. I I, I just I just CBA with this shit. This is drama shit. It'll be dead in, in a day. Dude, the news the news cycle is moving so fast now. Like, it won't even matter. Off to PGI to participate in PGI charity showdown. Pumped. Hashtag ad. XQC hypocrite herald. If someone even so much as gives you free stuff, you are technically supposed to disclose that as an ad. They flew us to Germany, put us up in a hotel, not only for a non-charity tournament but they that they won, but also that. Not sure covering accommodations counts as paying to promote. Wait, wasn't XQC's point that they don't have to disclose it? Or did XQC even say anything about that? He didn't even say anything about it. So what is the what is the argument here? I think the the point here is my take on this is just that it's bad for the industry as a whole i don't really care about the drama stuff or to pick apart every one of these individual things this was a tournament not a fundraiser charity stream on a personal channel 100 percent, this counts you are right people care more about the drama for people rather than the actual answer yeah nobody cares about the actual answer people just want to see fucking bunch of it's all fucking primal shit, dude everyone's just like slinging shit at each other it's all high school. It's food fight. This is just a food fight. Except it's a food fight that costs the fucking gaming industry millions of dollars. That's the problem. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Trying to understand this take, you're saying if a middleman is paying you instead of the charity, it doesn't count as getting paid by the charity. Ninja blocked and unblocked xqc which made xqc automatically unfollow ninja it's been confirmed that charities do offer sponsorships but how is the close isn't clear oh well that's the same answer we came to yeah streamers do charity streams that aren't sponsored as well it seems xqc was partially long wrong and he admitted it but he's also right how streamers should disclose how much money they receive from charity sponsorships the entire exchange should have finished after Doc dr lupo responded to xqc however it went right off the rails after jessica 
responded. So there's LSF's like little like bait that like it's all Jessica's fault. I definitely don't think that Jessica should have initiated this, especially since like I feel like this conversation was at like a four and Jessica took it to like an eight and that was like totally uncalled for. But at the same time, XQC could have at any point just been like, yo, like chill. And then he went to the eight, took it to a nine, etc. But you can't like, again, my position is that it's, it, it's, it's all there. So it was her fault. No, I'm saying it's everyone's fault. They're all idiots. That's my take. Everyone's an idiot. Just fucking get off Twitter. Like try to get taken seriously as an industry. Like we're trying to be professionals here. That's it. it, it like that's except Dr. Lupo. Dr. Lupo is fine. Yeah. But this kind of shit, this whole, um, this kind of whole thing, like Gucci bags and like women not doing enough. And like, this, this is bad. It's not good. What's your take on the on the sexism take? Was XQC sexist? I genuinely don't know. I mean, that's like a fucking um that's like a fucking uh like drama take. I don't know. Like I'll just like you decide. My job is to bring you like business and industry news. I'm not gonna fucking tell you what to think about that. If a nonprofit organization is planning a fundraising campaign, you may be considering hiring a professional to do the work. Professional fundraisers conduct campaigns for a fee. Often it's a percentage of the money they collect. The fundraiser will represent your organization to potential donors. The FTC's, the nation's consumer protection agency, says it's important to investigate every firm you're considering hiring. Inappropriate behavior by a fundraiser can result in negative publicity for your organization. Um, contact other nonprofit donors once you compile a list of potential. Call them for background information. When you're interviewing, be clear. Ask what procedures are in place. Many states also have regulations regarding charitable solicitations. Ask whether the telemarketer understands these requirements, how they plan to follow them. Include a statement about adhering to state regulations and federal law in a written contract. In addition, make sure the materials made by the fundraiser do not comply with any state do not call laws. Some states require paid fundraisers to identify themselves as such and to name the charity for which they are soliciting. That's the answer. Holy shit. That's actually the answer. That's the actual answer. The answer is a state by state. That's why it's so confusing. There, there is, there is no federal regulation. That's the actual answer. Holy shit. We did it. Okay. That is the actual answer. There isn't a federal regulation. It's state by state. It depends on the state. Holy fuck. I'm going to end this right now. Devin tweets to him. <laughs> At Devin Nash. Okay, sweetie. Thanks, dude. Yeah. All right. The ambiguity, is that too big of a word for most people on Twitter? It probably is. Around charity disclosure or streams is because it's state by state. There is no federal guideline. Source. Image. FTC statement.
FTC statement. Where did I fucking save my own file? Fuck! Hang on. Okay, there it is. Okay, second tweet. As to who is right and who is wrong, the answer is... that it's not good for anyone. If we're ever going to be taken seriously as an industry, avoid food, Twitter food fights like this one. Okay. <laughs> as to whom, yeah, it is actually whom. I like using whom too, because it makes me sound like a medieval badass. All right. You are the principal. <laughs> Any Hoomers? <laughs> no, it is who because it'd be answered with he and not him. Isn't, aren't they both acceptable? No, it's not whom, but I want to use whom. Fuck. God damn it. I can't have nice things. I want to sound like a medieval, like Victorian age noble. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> the peasant class is fighting again, my lord. Mm, toss them some gold coins and be on our way. Whom should be used to refer to the object or verb of preposition? Okay, I don't know what the fuck- That didn't make it any simpler, you just made it more complicated. Whom is the right object pronoun? Whom only if they're an object of a verb. Any English in chat? <laughs> Why is everyone an English major? Well, they have to take a break from, um, you know, running their billion dollar companies and deadlifting 500 pounds to give us the facts about English because they're also called Ludwig. Unironically, yes. Yeah. I appreciate your insight into this. Some people are just making this situation worse. That's my job is to bring in the facts. That's literally what I do here. Yeah. As to who is right and who is wrong. Keep reading it. You can, if you can replace he or she, you can replace him or her. Use whom. Who should be used to refer to the subject of a sentence? I'm a linguistics major. Well, then what's the answer? Don't just tell me you're a linguistics answer. What's the answer? To whom it may concern. <laughs> whom is right? Use whom th? <laughs> okay. Okay. It's probably either is okay if no one can come on a, if no one can come to a conclusion on this, right? That's to whom it is right. <laughs> it's who? You're who. By whom, from whom, to whom. As to who is wrong. Fuck this. All right. As for who is right and wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. As for who is right or or wrong, the answer is that this isn't good for anyone. If we're ever going to be taken ser if we're ever going to be taken seriously as an industry, avoid Twitter food fights.
Whometh ever is the right most verily, the other being the wrong most. Hear me. I am that I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, are we good? On this fortnight as to whom it may concern, thou may reference the above scripture in order to write thy mind and settle such conflicts. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Replace food fight with kerfuffle. No, it's that's too that's too smart. As to who as for who is right or wrong, the answer is that this isn't good for anyone. If we're ever gonna be taken seriously in the industry, avoid Twitter food fights like this one. Can you work in Krangled? Listen, dude, I'm a huge supporter of trying to put Krangled into everything, but I can't get it. I can't get it into this one. I there's there's no way to include it. I'm sorry. I promise you we'll use it in another tweet. We don't okay. Yeah, avoid Twitter food bites like this. Yep. We don't need to say one. It's definitely whom. Okay, you guys that are on the who or whom argument, this is equivalent to Ludwig's argument about if you have two lasagnas and you put one lasagna back on top of the other lasagna, is it the same lasagna? That's literally the universe we're in right now. We can't, we can't go here. This is a dark place. Like in our kingdom, the light doesn't shine here. <laughs> okay, just fucking move on. We're never gonna get, we're never gonna get there. <laughs> like, this is. The whom gang? <laughs> Don't even tweet it. It's just trying to be holier than thou, injecting yourself into other people's drama. Problem solved. No. First of all, we're streamers. It's our job to inject ourselves into drama. Also, second of all, I'm not, like, doing drama. I'm literally just giving the fucking actual message. Okay? All right, we're tweeting this. It's happening. There we go. I'm not, like, going in and roasting people. I'm not, like, LOL, like, stupids. Like, I'm just saying. All right. There's the tweet. Go. Yeah, like, people actually fucking accusing me of being, um... A drama frog. You called them children? I just... No! Adults have food fights. Oh, there's the second tweet if you want to... Yeah. And look, it's, it's like... I mean, I don't know. Holy shit. The number of retweets we already got. Somebody sent me... Okay, okay reply, okay, sweetie. Fuck you. <laughs> How did we get 20 retweets on this already? And also 20 replies, and they're all memes. Also, this fucking guy that sends a fucking weenie every single Twitter... Oh, no, wait, we gave him permission to do that. All right, it's fine. That's like his his shit post. Because he's he got better in the real chat. Every fucking time Devin Nash has entered the Rumble. Wrong screen. What? Oh, no, I'm on the right screen. It's good. Oops. Look at these replies. The whole thread is crangled because Devin didn't use whom. Halt whom goes there. Whom <laughs> people are going to read that. Any whomers. People are going to read this and be like, what the fuck are these people talking about? Like, <laughs> what? 
this this is a 10 out of 10. Devin walking in to settle this. <laughs> this is a good ass. This is a very good ass tweet. I love it. Good job. Whomth asked. Whomth asked. Holy shit. I saw you using an electric kettle. What electric kettle do you use? Does temp matter when you're using a nice cup of green tea? Yeah, it matters a lot. You don't want to make your temperature hotter than 190 degrees. I use an electric kettle. I don't know. I just bought an electric kettle off of Amazon. I'm not married to it. It's called Hamilton Beach. I think you get it from like... It's actually pretty expensive, I think, to get a... Here, you just Google um, temperature electric kettle. And uh, it would be any of these. Like, you want this one, the Bona Vita or whatever, variable temperature. I think this is the one that I have. No. No, it's not. Maybe they don't sell the one that I have because I'm like a fucking boomer. Oh, yeah, this is the one. This is the, this is the kettle I have. It's 50 bucks. And um, you press a button on it. Wait, no, actually, that's an older kettle that I have there. This is the kettle that I have at home. What the fuck? Yeah. This is the kettle that I have at home. You press the button, um, and uh, it makes you the thing. It even says tea on it. So there's like 180 for white tea, 190 is typically where I do my green tea. Alzheimer's. Whom gang, thank you. Add disclosure statement needed. I'm not sponsored, fuck off. I You can buy any of the ones on Amazon. Fuck the drama, dude. Miss me with all that shit. Okay. What if we don't actually want the industry to be taken seriously? Recent behavior has rarely indicated on net that we wanted to make this a massive forefront industry to be taken seriously. Genuine question not being a game for gamers guy you you want to take the industry seriously because that actually is what creates a successful like the very essence of your question um oh don't do this don't ever do that what the fuck I don't even know how to answer that question in a way that's like... Well, I guess I have to have an answer, otherwise I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? Yeah, okay. So, why should we take an industry seriously, like the gaming industry? Let me- let's have a thonk about this, Twitch chat. Let me- let me thonk real hard. Okay, I got it. I think there's a perception that professionalism equals not fun. So it's like the gaming industry being like the Wild West and like being like a shit slinging stuff. It's like we can have all that and we can have all the fun without like actual toxicity that limits stuff from happening. Okay, like per, for example, I'll, I'll, like in this case, right? It's a little bit fun to see XQC and Ninja go back and forth in drama and stuff like that, right? And you may think that it's like, oh, like, we want more of that. We want more of that drama. But that's the most positive interpretation of professionalism. The negative is stuff like what happened with the, um, with the, um, uh, sexual misconduct accusations that came out, okay? is like, that's the problem. That's the dark side of this, right? 
when you're not taken seriously as an injury industry and no one's taking you seriously, you have these problems. And when you have these problems with like all kinds of people get left on the down and out and their lives are objectively worse because we aren't holding ourselves to a certain standard as an industry. And that professionalism costs a lot more in negativity than the little bit of joy that you think you get for four minutes watching Ninja and XQC go at each other on Twitter. There is a much bigger macroscopic thing that's happening where brands are coming in and money is coming in and new streamers are coming in and there's these partnerships being forged and gaming as a whole is growing and that's giving that's getting people to bring us better games and better opportunities and more people the opportunity to work in this field all that stuff is like really good combined with like professionalism and high standards that make it so that we can take this seriously and we don't have women coming out being like I was raped by my boss or these kind of things like there's like being taken more professionally means there become systems of HR and accountability that at least diminish those those cases, right? They don't eliminate them, unfortunately. But a lot of the problem with the gaming industry is because of its toxic roots. And while there may be a few people that are like, yeah, ha -ha, I love it when he calls people the N-word on Xbox Live. We need to strive to have a better world than that. Like we, we need to we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard and we ought to hold ourselves to a higher standard so that we can um, usher in a new era of people treating each other with more positivity and giving people more opportunity in the space. That would be my literal answer to that question. Actually took me a bit to think about it. It might feel like it's really cool um, to be like, oh yeah, like, you know, huh, like like Xbox Live love when they talk shit, but it really just like, at, in the end of the day, it makes it worse for everyone. And we should aspire to be better, I think. That's that's what I would say. Yeah. I don't I don't think it's a bad I think you can still have a shit ton of fun and like we can still um, I just heard from Envin that you'll be able to stream the panel tomorrow. There should be an email. Oh, fuck. That's fucking awesome. Really? Really? Fuck yeah. That's super cool. Can you... Who did you talk to? That's great news. My man. I hope that's true. Can I email someone or like whatever? Um, I have a panel with Envin Global tomorrow on esports and the rise of, uh, uh, of the esports industry. And I tried to ask permission to Envin Global if I can stream it. And apparently this Burger Bros dude reached out to someone at Envin and they said I can. Which which they, they should let me do because it's like all it's to their benefit, right? Um <laughs> when Death and Nash takes the headphones off, it's about to go down. <laughs> I love it. That would be really, really cool if that's the case. There should be an email trying to get it pushed through with the details. Yeah, because I need some written comment. I need some kind of written confirmation that that's the case, right? And, and if you want me to reach out to someone via email, I can do that. But I just don't know who to, who to talk to. Whom's to talk to? Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Yes. Yeah. Not on topic. I'd love to hear your pointers on how agencies can be applied to small and big time streams. Um, we're doing that. That's part of my homework assignment to build this agency list, which I never fucking get around to doing, but I'll probably do tomorrow. Yes, so I I will I'm working on that, but I'm. Tempo Storm tweeted about this. I mean that's whatever. Tempo Storm is whatever. Choose your fighter. I'm on Team Alinity, dude. Chuck that cat. Eric said that 100% Invent is on board, but the email will be sent to confirm and send any assets you need or want. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I... So, right now, 
The problem is that I'm trusting a guy named Burger Bros in my chat. That's what's happening, right? So, um, I like I. Uh, that's 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 the transaction. Okay, so I I need something more than that. Like I need an Edmund Global to send me something or, um, whatnot. Like I I, I think it's if if you actually reached out, that's cool. But if if I <laughs> here here's the conversation, right? It's like. Oh, I streamed your panel, and then they're like, "Why the fuck did you do that?" Well, Burger Bros told me it's cool. <laughs> they're gonna be like, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's not is an agency list that's actually legit. That's what we're working on. Yes, I'm trying to make a list uh, of agencies so that people can um, go to it, and then they can actually get answers about these problems because there's been a, a ton of uh, problems and, and stuff about it. LinkedIn.com, Andrew Burger. Summer Partnerships Intern at Envin Global. Okay. I mean, that's good. <laughs> um, but still, I don't know, dude. I, I just, you know, you understand what I need, okay? Listen, I'm very tempted to trust a person whose last name is Burger. That, like, I've, I've, I've moved you two steps up in my normal trust of a, of a human being because that's a very cool last name. But I still need some kind of... Chat, what do you mean he's doxing himself, okay? Guys, listen. I'm going to dox myself, okay? My name is Devin Nash. I've been holding you back from it for a long time. But that's the truth. My name is Devin Nash. I've hid this from you for that long. Okay? I'm Devin Nash and I live in Seattle. Imagine using your real name to stream. What a fucking idiot. Does Mr. Burger wait with Mr. Show? To whom it may concern... My name doth be... Listen, if I could talk only in Old English, I would do this. This would be a thing that I'd do. 100%. Why use an agency when they you could use an influencer marketing platform? Actually, not a bad question. The answer is because most influencer marketing platforms don't care about you and are objectively dog shit and don't actually link you up with anyone. There are like 6 billion connecting brands to influencer platforms, but they don't actually help you because most of those brands are like fucking mobile games or things like that. And like the likelihood that you're going to get a deal that's customized to you is be is very small. There, are, I, I actually should probably do an entire video about why people should use an agency um, because that's a conversation worth having as well. From the Discord. Who or whom? Oh my god, are you guys still on about this? <laughs> okay. Oh my god.
I love our Discord, dude. Okay, our Discord. He's not coming back. Discord.gd slash Devin. Join it. It's a very, very good community. Lots of very cool people there. 24 7 talk about gaming industry stuff. Next, we have to talk about Brian and Trovo in a sec here. And I got a I, I pin all good memes in our Discord. Burger Bros, thanks for the tier one, dude. You're gonna go on the panel and sell the scam known as esports? Bro, I'm gonna level with you. I don't even know what my panel is about. <laughs> I've done absolutely zero. Like, let me go find. I guess it's probably relevant for me to find out. Um, let's go look. Envin Global. Uh, <laughs> it's probably about Twitch or esports or some shit. I don't fucking know. Hang on. Don't. There we go. Okay. What's it about? Uh, using Twitch to elevate your esports brand. Sure. I can talk about that. I mean, most likely, um, I'm going to be like the, like, I can tell you that like, oh, Blue Frost, thanks for the five gifted. Appreciate that. Burger is not impressed. <laughs> Blue Frost, thank you. Sorry, Burger. Uh, so I... Most likely, the take of these people will be like, esports is like a really growing field and it's like amazing and blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, it's shit. It's all shit. <laughs> then they'll be like, why did we invite this guy? And that'll probably be the panel. But guess what? You're going to be able to see it because I'm going to stream it for you guys because we just got permission, apparently, according to Burger. Extra Q. Another five gifted. Thank you. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely 1v3 if I have to. Thank you very much. You're going on as plastic bagman. Yep. <laughs> I, I mean, how I envision this happening. 212. Holy shit. 15 gifted subs. Um, hang on. Let me update this. 212. Kafira. Nine gifted subs. Why not 10? Oh, it's easy math, luckily. Okay. Thank you, Kafira. Estra Q. 15 gifted subs. Thank you. Um, 212 Phantom. 15 also. Thank you. Blue Frost. Thank you also. Y'all are fantastic. Oh my god. Raynor. Thank you for the 7. No. 10. 10 gifted subs. Thank you. Raynor. 7. 10 gifted subs. Holy shit. I gotta go fast. I almost missed Blue Frost. Thank you very much. I don't know why you guys are doing this. Thank you. Blue Frost 5 gifted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Holy shit. So I imagine how it's going to go. Level 3 hype train already. Another 5. Thank you. Rainior, thank you very much. That's really generous of you, dude. That's a lot of gifted subs. Thanks, man, for the 15. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, so here's how I imagine it's going to go, okay? I think what's going to happen is... <laughs> They're going to be like, so what do you guys think of the state of esports? And like one of these people is going to be like, well, esports is like a really exciting vertical with lots of viewers and like um, people are increasingly watching. I think it has a bright future. And then like I'm going to wander in late while I'm like talking to my chat, yelling at someone in my chat, like, shut up, idiot. And then I'm going to come in and be like, what? 
Uh, esports? It's shit! It's shit! It's all shit! And then, like, I have, like, fucking crazy hair. They are expecting, like, this guy holding a mic with, like, a professional fucking, like, setup with, like, like a collar. And he's got his hair done and shit. They got this, like, homeless person with crazy fucking hair. My shirt's dirty. I put, like, food on it. I, like, come in and I'm like, ah, it's, it's terrible! It's a, this whole thing. And then fucking somewhere, Andrew Berger is like, oh, God, what did I do? This is fucked. Oh, God, I'm gonna lose this internship for sure. Oh, man. That's how it's probably gonna go. Like, <laughs> casual robot, thank you very much for the five gifted. I appreciate it. Kafira hit 1,000 gifted subs? Holy fuck. Kafira, you need to, that's it, you're done gifting. You don't need to gift ever again. You did it. You, 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 you passed the level. Thank you. That's actually an insane amount. 1K gifted subs since the inception of gifted subs. Thank you. I got the box. Oh, is it an actual box? I'm done. Yeah, dude, you're good. You're good. That's all you. That box is fucking legit. Holy shit. Look at that box, chat. Look at that box. That's pretty good. Hi, I know this might be something that you don't want to talk about right now, but is there an update on the Tifu and FaZe lawsuit? Uh, it's ongoing. The, the, so, uh, like I said in the videos, lawsuits take a very, very long time. Very, very long time to sort out. And so it'll be months and months before we hear anything about it. Thank you very much. That's insane. You didn't notice my box? Wait, 212, you have a box also? Damn, that's cool, dude. 212 also has a box. I didn't know you had that box. Thank you, man. That's fucking... Both of you, that's fucking crazy. You guys are crazy people. Level 4 hype train also, you guys are crazy too. Thank you very much. That's that's unbelievable. Thank you guys. My mom has a box. I know I was there last night. <laughs> Extra Q, chill. Thank you. It's okay. Thank you. Twenty gifted subs. Extra Q. Thank you very much for gifting subs to the Devon Nash Autonomous Zone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the B. Oh, that guy's cool. I like that B. Sorry, I didn't mean to assume it's gender. Um, Net Yellow, thank you for the 10 gifted. Yo. Thank you. Where's Net Yellow? Net Yellow, what are you at? You're like a crazy person. You're up here somewhere. I think 97. Net Yellow is actually a crazy person. Thank you, dude. You support the stream to a huge degree. Thank you. Vinny Code, thank you for the five. Oh my God, you guys. You're bringing it in. Thank you. Small Ant just watched part of your VOD with Ludwig. Oh, good. Small Ant seems like a cool... Holy shit. Sometimes you say things that I think it's cool, so here's some bits. That's insane, Remy. Holy shit. Thank you. Oh my god. What the fuck? What's happening right now? How many... Wait, how many is this? 50 gifted subs and 10... Okay. You guys are actually insane. Remy, thank you very much. Holy shit. Are you on the the big list? You need to be on the big list. Thank you. Novo, holy shit. You're out of this world. Ever thought about getting someone to automate the gifted sub or do you like doing it manually? I like doing it manually so people know I'm grateful. Um, I think I think it's a good way to do it. Cause it, it really means a lot to me. Um, that this happens. So I'll, I'll probably always keep it manual, even though it's like fucking crazy. Thank you, man. I think you've actually gifted more than that, though. Yeah, this is actually insane. And thank you, Remy. That's an, that's crazy. We're going to talk about the uh, Trovo and Brime thing next. Level 5 high train, 168%. Holy shit. Holy shit. Awesome, dude. You guys are... You guys... I, I love this community. Thank you so much. The logistics might be crazy over time. We reset it every month. Yeah. So, so, um, because it goes into the Hall of Fame in our Discord. The whole idea is to get people that support the stream to, like, to, um, uh, to, like, be immortalized. Sub, oh my God. How many is 20 gifted subs? Thank you. Love what you do. Keep it up. Thank you, man. 
Can you click the name to see how many? I don't know. Can you? Samoa, you're awesome. Thank you. I don't think you can. No. No, I don't think you can. I don't think there's a way to do it. If there was, that would be really cool. Samoa, holy shit. Thank you. You're always very kind. Thank you. And thank you very much. Holy shit. Michael, thank you for the five. Thank you. Burgerton Von Burger here. They're going to give you a car at the end of the panel and want to stream your reaction. I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> Considering... <laughs> I'd be very surprised. I don't think they even paid me for the panel. I don't, it's like... <laughs> it says it right next to their name in chat. It doesn't. Hello, I'm new here. What is this stream about? Um, this stream is a stream about business. We talk about big business cat things here. I am the biggest business cat. Hi, you often talk about people working up to many viewers. Do you have anything talking about how to gain your first 1 to 15 viewers? Well, it's funny you asked. If only I had a, a YouTube video about exactly how to grow from, say, 0 to 100 viewers. If only there was a video like that. Exactly how to grow a Twitch stream from 0 to 100 viewers. Ah, there is one. <laughs> it's right here. So yeah, that's the video that'll help you. This is, uh... 212, thank you for the 9! 212, you're done. You've got the 1,000 box. No more gifted subs from you. Thank you, sir. Oh my god. How do I... Okay, fuck. What's 9 plus 15, chat? Oh no. 4, 20, 30, 24? 24. I think it's 24. Okay. God damn it. 256. I don't think we had a hype train this big. 24. All right. How many gift subs to haircut on stream? There's no amount of money. Um, My, uh, my hair gives me my power. <laughs> Hungover Furball. Thank you for the tier one. Beach Girl SK8. Thank you very much. I feel like that's a name from like 1994. I'm beach I'm beach girl skater. I actually do have a question. Okay, hang on. That's 100% like a name from like AOL, beach girl skater. That's an aim name. It is. Yeah, 100%. I like it. It is definitely Okay, I want to upload more to YouTube, but when I stream is super heavy story games usually, so I'm not sure it would translate well. <sighs> you might have to do some extra work. Where, like, you actually convert the story streams to the highlights. There's a there's a highlight way to do this. I would refer to my, um, my five, uh, Jeremy's five pillars of God tier content, which I'll share with you in a minute here. Hang on. Um, -na 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 -na. I'll try to find it for you. We need to have that guy back on. I fucking love that guy. Historic. I should have this posted somewhere as like the five types of content. Hang on, I'm trying to find it for you guys. This will be really helpful. I think we talk about this in a YouTube video. I can't find it right now. I'm looking through my notes. Oh, I'm not sorting. I'm not sorting in the right place. Okay, here's the list for you. This is from Jeremy Curios, a person with um, uh, like eight YouTube channels. So I think that when you're doing YouTube content, it always falls within one of these five categories. And these are kind of your choices. And you can kind of think about like what to do. So I think that highlights being that they're like storyline highlights from the moments and then maybe your commentary on why they matter and your reactions to them. And obviously reactions to big things in the story. So you could do a title like, this is actually probably the answer for you. You could do a title like, let's say you play uh, The Walking Dead. 
Um, and it could be like streamer reacts. Obviously, this is kind of like clickbait, but I'm just like going off to like reacts to biggest Walking Dead moment. And then like you get the thumbnail right, and that would be like a really successful video, right? Um, it's a little bit clickbaity, but I'm just trying to give you like the sort of mindset to think off of so that you can like start thinking about how you would do that. Does that make sense? Also, thank you very much, guys, for that hype train. That was some fucking insane shit. Thank you. You need to be clickbaity. A little bit, yeah. I wouldn't probably go this hard, but I would be like, um, you can look at like people like uh, Ludwig and, and I and stuff like that for how we do our YouTube videos. And also, this this actual uh, video explains a lot of like how you do YouTube titles and things like that as well. This is back when I actually like did my hair. Many people are streaming under stocks and bronze, which are misappropriated board game category. My favorites, though, stream under just chatting and just keep the flow going rather than silently day trading. Uh, everyone should stream in just chatting. Yeah, the other categories are bad. Um, I appreciate it. Gotta say, I gotta, gotta say this is an image. Yeah, for sure. I'll put it back up then. So I would say the way you could think about it is you could reacting to like, okay, the biggest moment in like TLL2. I can't believe that happened in TLL2. I can't believe like, the, or so, so the other thing too is like, you should also play the field when it comes to, so look at the last of us two, right? That was probably the biggest news in gaming was the story of last of us two. That there was a lot of content within there that you could have done, right? You could have done like three videos on that, right? You could have done like um, thoughts on uh, who's the chick that was in the game, um, the one that everybody hated with the arms. Uh, see, I've already forgotten. That's how how I don't care. Abby, yeah, like um, thoughts on the biggest Abby story reveal, or thoughts on like see, like you could do commentary around these stories, like. Um, Look at Cyberpunk, for example, right? Cyberpunk gives you story updates all the time with, like, updates for their game. Can you comment on that? Can you do CEO, Abby? Can you do uh, commentary on that? Can you do, like, uh, commentary on, like, some of the biggest things? Yeah. Like, that's how you'll start to get value out of that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? I'm trying to give you a lot of value because that's a, that's a lot of bits. <laughs> Thank you. But you get what I'm saying, right? There's a better bunch of opportunity there. Okay, link me all the Brime stuff. Actually, a really good idea since I restream and work with chat on Cyberpunk news stuff. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I think, and, and and so Remy, I think you could do that. Link me everything to do with Brime right now. And we're gonna get started. Link me all of it. Okay, Um, I think that you could actually start thinking outside the box like that and just put a little bit of time into like planning out stuff like that. And you'll come up with some really good things. Like, think more about the big story stuff that's happening within gaming instead of like, oh, I have to like make something of my VODs. And you can start doing commentary since you probably already do that with chat anyway. Okay, we've got the official Twitter account. Thank you, Glock. There's a Forbes article about it. Okay. I made this mistake a long time ago. Okay. So Forbes, I used to think, has a lot of um, clout being that it's Forbes. But these days, Forbes literally just anyone can write on Forbes. Like it doesn't matter. To whom it may concern, 78 gifts, not 40. The analytics are wrong. P.S. Do my mom again. Holy shit, $78 donation from Samoa. Guys, that's insane. Thank you very much. Dude, this is way too much. You guys stop donating. Seriously, this is actually fucking crazy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's insane. 
I will update your gifty thing. Hang on. I, I'm way behind, I think. But thank you for... Yeah, hopefully that helps. Um, already answered that question, on we. Fuck! Alright, hang on. 78, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13? So it's 83. Okay. 83. Got it. Okay. I think that's right. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> So Forbes is basically a website where you can basically post anything these days. All right. Let's talk about watchbrime.tv. Is this safe for work? Is anything on here not safe for work? Can I post a dick pic on Forbes? You can't because you can't find your dick. But an, yes, presumably you could probably get a dick pic on Forbes with how low the security is. It's like insane what you can post on Forbes these days. It used to be like super, super legit. But nowadays, yeah, it's not. Because the way that it, so the way that you know is like if you go to Forbes... You see how it says Forbes.com slash sites slash the person that wrote it? So it's just a bunch of randos that write on Forbes. Yeah, it used to be really different. Who's the girl next to Dr. Disrespect? His wife, right? I, I would assume, right? Yeah. Why are we making a video on Brian when it's a meme? Because sadly we have to. The amount of messages. It's insane. Well, this is not going to be a video just about Brian. It's also going to be a video about Trovo and new streaming platforms. The question that I have is if I should get some new tea before I do it. Never, never, I don't think I should drink more tea. I'm already on cup number four, and it's seven o'clock. <laughs> I should probably chill. I'll just do water. I'm, I'm spilling all over myself. It's really weird that people like me on Twitter because don't they not like anybody? I usually get really nice comments on Twitter and like I can read my Twitter comments. That That's probably going to change at some point, right? Like eventually I'm going to get... Because I've heard like Twitter is like super toxic, but everyone on there is very nice to me. I don't know you're a likable guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> read Reddit. <laughs> it's weird that I'm getting those comments, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I 
It's because you have to respect your elders. Thanks, dude. Okay. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> uh, I'm turning notifications off for a bit. Uh, I have like 80 notepads, 40 windows. Oh my God. Okay. How long have we been streaming for, dude? This is high energy. Eve maps. Um. Oh, 337. Feels like a long time. All right. What the fuck is this? Oh, that just made me re-pissed. Okay. Thank you. That means a lot to me. You're one of the few worth my time. I'll try to keep that up. Okay. All right, let's begin. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the mugs and I got pissed off again. I have like 80 notepads. This one, this one. Okay. <clears throat> Silent. There's no sound, chat. Everyone be quiet. We're hiding right now. You can just take a breath. Whew. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. How do I do the ASMR? Here's it. This is teacup ASMR. You can drink tea with me. I feel so dumb doing this. All right, let's fucking do this video. I'm just stalling. Sorry. All right. <sighs> okay. Um. Look. I can't believe I have to do this. That's why it's actually taking so long to do. I can't believe I have to do this. I can't believe it, all right? Because let me tell you a story, all right? Because long ago, there used to be an art, okay? It's an art that is now lost. The art was called the art of trolling. Okay, nowadays, if you troll on Twitch or YouTube or whatever, okay, you do what's called the filing cabinet, okay? You have the filing cabinet you go through, and you go, oh, let me pull out my trolling file, my trolling filing cabinet, okay? And you guys have like three or four things in that filing cabinet. It's like, up, oh, up, oh, this is the boomer one, the boomer file. Oh, that's always a good one. He's old, okay? Oh, the simp. That's a good one too. Oh, he's this yeah, he likes, he respects women. <laughs> wow, we should de like, okay, oh, uh, uh, oh. Oh, he's balding. Can't, can't let, there, there's that one, right? Okay. This is what trolling has become in 2020. And it's just terribly unfortunate that things have reached this point. However, occasionally, every once in a while, rarely, very rarely, okay, there is a master troll, a demon of the ancient world, someone who comes along who creates a true work of art. And that is the subject of this talk, Watch Prime TV, because they have trolled this so well that I actually have to make a video explaining how this is not a thing. But in this video, we're also going to put in some useful stuff. So I'm going to talk about uh, Trovo as well, as that is highly requested. And... um some of the other broadcasting websites that are coming up. So I think this whole thing started because of a Twitter. Is it, is it this one? Is it watch Brime HQ? Is that the Twitter that happened here? 
I'm pretty sure. Or which which tw- which Twitter is it? Watch Brime. Okay. Watch Brime. At Watch Brime. Okay. Eighty seven thousand followers. So. The first thing that you're greeted with is a pinned tweet, which is by Forrest Gump, that says, Welcome to Brime. For the initiated, this should always this should worry you already, okay? <laughs> Welcome to the future. Welcome to Brime. We can't wait for you to see what we're building. Generally, when someone has a product, okay, or is a company and a business, they will have what is called a uh proof of work. That means it's like There's something that exists that could show you this is actually a thing. So the first thing that I did was I went to Crunchbase and I looked for Brime, the company. And I looked to see if there were any organizations that might match this, um, the name of this company, right? Uh, Surprise, there aren't. So this might be crazy, but it actually takes a lot of money to run a streaming company. If you want to start a, what we would call a CDN, okay? Busting out the notepad, you know it, the Nash special. A CDN is a content delivery network. In this case, for live streaming. Streaming. Okay. Content delivery network. Uh, this is hard to do. <laughs> okay. And, and, and in this video, I'm actually going to explain how hard it is to do. So if you want to build a CDN, you need to get funding from somewhere. So if you don't have funding, that is your first red flag as to something being up. Right, because if there's no funding, there's no way you're going to be building a website. But uh, they very intelligently followed uh, some of the broadcasters, particularly Doctor Disrespect, Shroud, and Lupo, which created this idea that maybe these guys are coming together to um, build some kind of streaming website. To which I answer you: Whenever you look at influencers trying to do anything. Besides get out of bed before 4 p.m. every day, which in of itself is a Herculean effort, there is no way that those three streamers are going to be able to start a streaming website without some serious gear, okay? That's just not going to happen. We would be hearing about it. There would be info about it. There would be stuff going on about it. So no funding, all right? And then Forbes, um, or rather one of the independent commentators on Forbes, made a kind of useful article showing how we've gotten to this point, um, that there are these conspiracy theories that uh, people are on Brime, okay? But there is absolutely no indication that this is a thing, okay? Supposedly, four people work at this company, um... If it was a Google-backed or Spotify-backed streaming service, they would uh, there would be more people than four. Also, if it was Google-backed or Spotify-backed, why would Google start another streaming service? If only they had a live streaming service right now, we could call it something like, I don't know. Well, it'd have to involve, like, you, right? Because it's like you. And, like, the internet's like a series of tubes, so we could call it something like YouTube live streaming service. No, that's a dumb idea. Forget that. Okay, we're not going to... Never mind. I don't know what I was thinking, okay? So, like, Google already has a streaming service. They're not going to do another one, right? That wouldn't make any sense. So, Brime's a meme. That's that's it. There, there's, there's, no, there's no meme that's, that's the end of it, okay? We could call it... Meme tube. We could call it anything. They're not going to make another one, okay? All right. So, nothing on Crunchbase. Nothing there. Brime's a meme. It might be a startup from, like, an an individual that's, like, trying to start this, but there's no hope this goes anywhere, okay? So then, I don't even think I need to say anything else about this. I, I don't think there... I, I might take questions later. And if you have a question, you can save it. Okay. So then let's talk about Trovo. In China, there is a giant ass company called Tencent, which owns an unfathomable amount of things. Um, Trovo is a very, is the attempt for Tencent to get into the North American streaming market 
by making a website that is literally a green version of Twitch. <laughs> so they actually just copy and pasted Twitch onto the website and then they started streaming here, okay? And um, I don't think this is a thing. Now it's 10 cent. Owners of Riot Games, Path of Exile, one of my favorite games of all time. It's a very big company. However, I think they're, and I don't know this for sure, and maybe we need to contact like a big law guy for this, but there must be some law in the United States about doing this. So like right now, Papa Taco here is holding down the fort with Call of Duty Mobile at 60 viewers. But if this website actually gets any kind of legit traction, there is going to be some kind of statement via Twitch where this is not going to fly, okay? But here, here is the meat of this talk and where I'm actually going to try to provide some value. I want people to understand how difficult it is to build a streaming service, okay? And to do this, we are going to go look at the quarter four stream elements results for 2019, and we're going to look at the history of how uh, streaming platforms have grown and the present market share just before Mixer shut down. So if we look at 2018, we can see that Twitch owned 67% of the market, down now in 2019 to 61%, and down even further um, uh, due to uh, just Twitch's, there's a whole other discussion we need to get there. Most of that market share was taken by Facebook, about 0.6 of that market share was taken by Mixer, and Mixer shut down. So Mixer came about, I think, in 2017, beginning of 2017 and had three years to get to 2.6% market share, which was then deemed by Microsoft to not be enough, and the platform was shut down. That's Think about that for a second, right? Mixer, a platform propped up by Microsoft, the most profitable company on earth, could not break into the streaming market by buying two of the most influential influencers on Twitch. And... By putting millions of dollars into marketing, millions of dollars into website development, millions of dollars into their content delivery network, and a very competitive marketing campaign. So, so anyone that thinks that Brime or Trovo, even if Brime is not a total meme, and I, and I, and I think it probably is a meme, right? Um, but even if it's not, if it's a legitimate effort at a CDN, I want you to recognize how difficult it is to break into this market because it like Facebook gaming via went from 3.1% to 8.5% of the market and Facebook gaming has 2 billion endemic users. So, so for a new, so this is the real challenge that a new streaming platform has. It's, it's, it's to bring users who would otherwise not use that website into the website. And this is a concept called UA or user acquisition, which is when you're like running a tech company, the only thing you're thinking about is UA usually. You're thinking about how do I bring users onto my platform? People will pay absurd amounts of money for this pleasure, right? For this for this privilege of having a user on their platform. For example, there are many mobile game companies that will pay up to 50 or $75 per download to an influencer because they know that the average amount of money that that influencer makes them, if a single person downloads their app, they'll spend more and they'll make more on advertising, they'll make more on partnerships and branding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the idea that uh, of getting users is very difficult. And this has been Twitch's major problem and was also Mixer's major problem, is that neither of these websites have the ability to pull users from some other place, right? Twitch, every new user that comes on Twitch is a user they have to painstakingly like pick out of like the normal crowd and like convert into a person that understands Pepe Frog and Lol W and Mill W and 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 all these different memes and even the, that those are just like common memes with even like the more esoteric memes right and like understands how to be a member of this community and participate in chat it's really hard to get these users that's one of the reasons by the way that most of the users that come to Twitch are not even endemic to the platform they come from places like YouTube they come from places like different places like that. That. So Twitch at the moment has about 50 million daily users as of COVID-19, which is way up from what it was before. Um, I, I was actually surprised as that number. It's it's declining now a little bit. I think it's about 8 to 9% week over week. 
compared to its like previous high. But it's still like they're still their number one problem is acquiring these new users. Mixer had the same problem because like grandpa that's on Windows 95 is not going to get a pop up to watch Shroud and be like, oh, right, that's something that I want to do. I'm going to watch Shroud like kick ass at Apex Legends. Like that's never going to happen, right? So in the same way, Mixer actually had the same problem and it actually led to its downfall. Mixer couldn't get enough endemic users to care about the platform and they couldn't even get Twitch users to care about the platform. So no one cared about the platform, so the platform dies. In the same way, any startup that has to go through the same process is going to run into the same problem. Tencent has nowhere to drive users from. They're not going to be able to leverage companies like Riot Games or Path of Exile or GGG or whatever to be able to get users because those those companies are pretty independent um, contractually under Tencent. At least Tencent hasn't messed with those companies in the past that dramatically. So compared to Facebook or YouTube, Facebook, which has 2 billion endemic users that they can pull from, and by the way, Facebook knows your dogs, grandmas, cats, dogs, brothers, likes and dislikes, and knows everything about you from the profiles they build on you, they're going to be able to serve a stream to you directly that you want to watch with an intelligent algorithm that rivals everything besides YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, YouTube also has 2 billion users that watch VODs, and it's a very easy conversion over from those people that watch YouTube to the people that are watching live streams. That is one of the reasons why I see YouTube is going to gain a lot of market share in the next two to five years, and maybe actually be a contender um, with Facebook, YouTube and Twitch for a platform that actually has like equal market share over time because it's so hard to do user acquisition. Anybody in tech can tell you how difficult it is to do user acquisition. So I don't think that we're going to see any scenario where one of these like new streaming websites like breaks onto the space. The only way that it would happen is if a existing platform had a huge amount of endemic users that were already trained in the digital media space and then could transfer that audience over. And I'm trying to think of a company that could do that. So um, some of the uninitiated might say Spotify, uh, but the problem with Spotify is that Spotify is owned by Google. So then we go back around the realm, we're back full circle, we end up where we left off, which is they're not going to make another YouTube. The other thing to keep in mind is that competitors that do have this capacity may not want to run something that has the same infrastructure or structural setup that Twitch has, right? So Twitch is built to keep a person on the website for a long period of time. That is to say that like the average amount of time that a viewer watches Twitch for is like, I think it's 109 minutes, which is a long ass time. So you can, ex you'll, you'll, you'll watch Twitch on average for about an hour and a half when you, uh, when you come here. If you take something like Instagram live or Periscope, for example, these are technically live streaming services but they occupy a very different market where the idea of Instagram live is for influencers to go live for people to join and there to be like an event like Snapchat live or whatever was more like something where like a influencer can go live and then they can kind of get the, you get the feel for what it is and then that ends. Right. And that's the purpose of those platforms. So we could take a platform like TikTok, for example, that has an enormous amount of endemic users. And my guess would be that those users wouldn't convert well over to a platform like Twitch. They might convert well over to like a, you know, 10 to minute to like an hour long stream. But keep in mind that this audience is an audience that has been trained to consume content in six second intervals. So there's no way that they're going to be able to convert to watching a stream for 109 minutes. Does that, does that make sense as to why? Because the, the, by virtue of the platform itself, it's not educating them to do that. So then you might look at someone like Discord, for example. And Discord actually might be the only real competitor that I would think could enter into the streaming space with a couple of caveats. There's some problems with Discord. Discord, one of the big problems 
is so right now Discord live streaming is actually awesome. I don't know if you guys have tried it, but a lot of times when I'm playing Path of Exile with the crew and we're in the uh, Path of Exile chat in my Discord, we just like hang out, start a stream, and people watch the stream. It, you can have up to 50 people watching one stream, and it's just to show. It's almost just to like show somebody something like, oh, let me show you this like piece of equipment that I got, or let me show you this thing. And it's actually really funny. I have no idea why this is. But a lot of times when I'm in my Discord and Path of Exile, I'll hit the Start Streaming button. And my intent is I just want to show somebody um, something that I'm talking about, right, for like three seconds. But it's like everyone hears that I'm streaming. They're like, Devin Nash is streaming in the Discord. And they like all come into the chat to like watch the Path of Exile stream for those three seconds. And I never know why this is. But that's like the behavior that they have. So Discord live streaming actually works really, really well. But the thing, there's there's two problems I think I have. Number one is that Discord's discovery outside of its individual servers is pretty much dog shit. It's really, really hard to discover new servers on Discord. They've tried to fix this through public servers, but every time we make our server public, we get bombarded by like 80 million CSGO bots, and they just shut down our whole server. So we don't make our server public for that reason. And to my knowledge... Um, very few people use Discord in that way. I think I would I would venture to guess I don't have the data on this that the vast majority of people that use Discord they get brought to a Discord server via an invite from a friend or someone that runs that server, um, or it's like an influencer server or whatever, and they come via a link because they saw it in like a stream title or something like that, uh, or or like a YouTube description like the ones that are uh, the one down below. Um, occasionally, so like when I was in the Path of Exile chat, side story, but it's pretty funny. Another guy named Devin came into the Discord, and he was 12 years old. And I asked him how he found the Discord, but being 12, he gave me a nonsensical answer like, um, oh, I just look around for stuff. So I have no idea how people like that, because that's happened two times. <laughs> I have no idea how people like that find my Discord, but sometimes people find Discords in weird ways. Suffice to say that the, the, the vast majority of people probably find it through an invite link. I, I think it would be really hard to be like a streamer on Discord because there's no central place where that would live. It could live on the app in theory, right? Um, but that has other problems. Like, like you would have to train your users to go from the app to the live stream. And right now, users are trained just to go to their Discord server. Notice the theme of what I'm talking about here, by the way. is what It's a concept called consumer behavior. Consumers are trained in a certain way to use a website a certain way. That's why when I go to freaking twitch.tv slash Devin Nash and I look at the UI update, okay, and I want to find my freaking videos, I'm not trained to click this to find it because nobody's trained to do that. That It's ridiculous that, that that is a thing. It drives me crazy that UI people don't understand this because, I okay, I want my videos. Well, where is it? Is it up here? I'll check over here. No, this is like cookie policy. It's not eSports. I don't even know why that's there. It's browse. Oh I, oh, I have to click the picture of myself to find my videos. That's what I have to do. Oh, okay. Wow. Super intuitive. Thanks. Okay, right? Like, th like consumer behavior is a certain way. And it's structured in a certain way to make users behave a certain way. Again, Twitch users behave in a certain way. They participate in, in the website for a long period of time. Um, that is not the case with Discord. There is no consumer behavior or training to get somebody to watch a live stream on there, get discovered on there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think Discord has a very uphill battle if they want to compete in this market. That brings me to the, the other point. Why would you want to compete in this market? There is not currently a single live stream platform that is even remotely profitable, right? Including Twitch. All of the platforms that are live streaming are burning money like crazy, like Joker level burning money with oil cans. Mixer burned so much money, it literally burnt itself out of existence. It basically neutron starred and, and, and blew up and faded out of existence. And uh, YouTube's live streaming service is not far behind, although because they have aggressive CPMs, it's probably a little bit better. Twitch has been losing money for a lot of time, and I think the theory on why you would want to build a live streaming platform is because um, you would hope that the platform would generally eventually turn around a positive return on investment. The idea there would be that the platform would make enough money at some point to be profitable. So that's like with YouTube. YouTube lost money for many, many years until it became incredibly profitable. And now YouTube is a part of like Google's greater ad network where they, they earned like $30 billion like last quarter and they're killing it. So um, it's not even beneficial 
for a small business to build a streaming site because you could expect that small business to have that website be unprofitable for the foreseeable future. I would say it would probably take five to eight years to even have a chance at being profitable. Twitch has been around for about that long and hasn't um, been profitable yet. And they're owned by Amazon. So the only people that are actually going to build any kind of competitive streaming service are people that are willing to take a loss for a long time in exchange for market share. And when there is a large um, market share already owned, when there's a big section of the, uh, of the pie that's already owned, this is spooky, right? You don't want to go into a market where people have first mover advantage with 61% of the market. That's a very spooky thing to do. Unless, bring me to my next point, you have an ad network which can support it. So the reason why you're seeing YouTube and Facebook go so hard into the live streaming market is because they have an ad network. So they can take, Facebook can take their ad network and YouTube can take their ad network and they can apply it one-to-one -one straight across the board right to their stream. Does that make sense? So if you're live streaming on Facebook, you plug into the existing ad network of which there are billions of dollars moving through every month and then you get that done, you have, and now you're in that same network. The big problem with Twitch is they basically have to build an ad network from the ground up because Amazon doesn't have a CPM network. Now, Amazon may have a CPM network in the future, and I hope they do build one because it would be incredibly lucrative for them to do so. But as of current, the only ones worth mentioning are like YouTube and um, Facebook. Mixed it right into the same problem. This is another reason why Trovo, I mean, if, if it wasn't enough that you look at this website and you get an idea of how far they have to go, all right, like I understand like Papa Taco right now leading the charge here with these 60 viewers, but like, come on, okay? It's gonna take a lot. The other problem is that Tencent doesn't have an ad network in the United States. And I don't even know if they have one in China. So when I say ad network, what I'm referring to is a system where you can buy and sell keywords for money, right? So that's a CPM system, cost per melee, cost per a thousand system. So if you don't have an ad networker, you don't really have a very strong incentive to be able to build something like Twitch. Um, this is also kind of concerning for Twitch because Amazon right now doesn't have as much motivation, in my personal opinion, to build up the website and to grow the website. Like Jeff Bezos is looking at that website and he's like, well, this is not going to be as strong of a vertical as say like Amazon Prime or AWS. It's almost unfair to compare them to those two other verticals in Amazon, but it gives you an idea of how big this chasm is. Amazon Prime is a monthly reoccurring system of revenue. Um, to the tune of billions and billions of dollars. Monthly recurring revenue is the best thing a business can hear about. You always want monthly recurring revenue. AWS is the same thing, but also supports an enormous amount of businesses. And those are the verticals that they're going to want to push. So like at the top of Amazon, they're not going to spend a lot of time thinking about how to grow Twitch because it just doesn't become a vertical that is as impressive for um, them as other platforms. So for all of these reasons, I'm trying to kind of make a catch-all video because when you hear about the six billionth platform that comes out, out, like you can reference this video back that if it doesn't have these fundamental factors, right, where it's like number, like fundamentals to a successful streaming site, okay? Number one, first mover market advantage, so that was Twitch. Number two, existing CPM ad network or system of advertising. Uh, number three, um, a large endemic user base to pull from. If you don't have the, or for an absolute, I can't even spell it, metric shit ton of investment and capital. But I would remind you that Fox put $120 million into caffeine, and that was something like, what, three years ago? And that website has done literally nothing. So even with an absolute ton of investment in capital, nothing happened, right? Um, same with, like, DLive, where I guess their investors are even weirder. Like, I'm not even sure where they're getting their money. It's from, like, Bitcoin or some shit. I don't even know. But same problem, right? Um... The point being that you could put multiple hundreds of millions of dollars into a website and without the first three of these, you will not guarantee your success. You're still going to be very far behind.
So I think that um, that's probably my take on this. Brime, I think, is either the work of a very successful troll, I, I, I hope it's that, or someone that is uh, delusional. Either way, it's not going anywhere. Neither is Trovo, neither is um, Caffeine or any of these websites. Most likely, for the, for the foreseeable future, we will see um, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch be the big, big names. And I think that most likely out of those, how it will shake out and look is I think that YouTube will probably capture like 35% of the market, Twitch will be another 35%, and the rest will be Facebook gaming. And if there is going to be another live streaming service that we get, we get excited about, it's going to have to be from a very large company that's not already owned by these companies, and it's going to have to have a way to convert its large amount of users over to its platform. And then they're going to have to wait years while that monetizes and they actually make money off it. Okay. That's my talk. That's why it's a meme. It's all a meme, okay? Thank you. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thank you. If you liked this video, subscribe, like, push the bell icon, do everything you got to do. Leave a comment below. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I will now take questions. In chat. Let's go. What are we doing? Spotify is not owned by Google. Really? Yeah, my mistake, if we have to correct that. If Spotify is not owned by Google, let's let me look. Ten cent. Okay. So forty six percent forty six point six percent ten cent. The rest may be independently owned. So I stand corrected. Spot, uh, Spotify not being owned is owned by Tencent, but that puts us in the same category as Trovo, so that's where we're at with that. That would be that. We'll correct that in the in post. Do you think Twitch would ever leverage Amazon Video to pull from that mainstream user base? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's a great question and good point. Yes, I do think that's a potential. I think that um, I think that watch parties have very high potential to bring in a lot of new users and to be one of the main ways that streamers share content in the next few years. I know that's really hard to see right now, but I think that's the case. Amazon does have a CPM network. Amazon has a method of advertising and they used to have a CPM network, but it's not a, it's not a CPM network in the sense that Google and Facebook have a CPM network. This is probably outside of the realm of explanation for this for this talk, but the Google and Facebook CPM network is a this is really complicated. Nobody cares about this shit. But like the Google and Facebook CPM network is a interconnected network based on the supply of demand of respective keywords to which a price can automatically raise and fall. The uh the Amazon ad network is not that. It's a it's a system which allows programmatic advertising via uh, fixed rates. It's really hard to explain. I, like Again, like nobody cares about this, but no, it's not the same. It's, it, it, they're, they're different. Um, I've been lurking around your live streams. You seem like a knowledgeable person. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. Do you think Trouble will be able to take off due to Tencent's presence in China? No. Uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese streaming platforms are already pretty well established, like Douyu and YY. I think it would be very hard to capture that market share. Also, United States and China don't share internet for all extents and purposes. Like, they kind of do, but it's really weird. 
So like, a, just because a streaming service is like really successful in uh, China, there's various reasons why it wouldn't be successful in America. Nonetheless, cultural. I've been here for two hours and I learned a ton. We'll come back for sure. Thank you, man. That's what we do here. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, Tencent owns Doyo too. So it's like they already, they're not going to compete with themselves. TikTok seems like a possible candidate. No. I explained why in the, uh, in the talk. They do have a very large use of, uh, large group of endemic users. The problem is that those users aren't trained to, to watch live streams for long periods of time. It would be it would be too hard to convert a mobile app like that over. And again, I don't think that Tencent has an interest in doing that. Does Apple have a chance to compete? Ooh. <laughs> Let me think about that for a second. No, I think not. Because where, number one, where would those users... How would you get those users? Like iTunes or like... Phone notifications and stuff like that, which would be really intrusive. Like, I, I don't I don't think so. Um, again, I think the thing that people are kind of missing about this is we can go through a list of every large company that has a lot of users, and we can debate if they're gonna build a streaming platform. The real question is why. The real question is why. Why build a streaming platform? Because it's not a profitable venture for the vast majority of companies. The only reason you would want to build a streaming platform is because you could get your existing ad network to live on that platform. And then you're going to make a ton of money that way in theory. But even that's going to take years to do. So, so once again, Apple does not have an ad network. So building a live streaming platform doesn't seem advantageous to them. You have to think like a big business. Pornhub live streaming platform unironically could compete in the porn industry. That I mean they they already do, right? Isn't that like don't don't they already have that because Pornhub actually has a CPM network. <laughs> yeah, like they, like they actually could. I mean they, they it couldn't translate into video games, but unironically the Pornhub has a CPM network. They could do it. <clears throat> Unironically. I'm pretty sure it doesn't Pornhub have a live streaming service. Um, obviously I can't research this on stream. One of you <laughs> one of you can go do it. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. So there you go. Like you don't know? No, dude. I'm a I'm a meat and potatoes guy. I just watch videos. I had this argument with my brother. He thinks Spotify would be successful in launching a streaming platform because of the amount of users already on it for podcasts. Do you think this is relevant? Um, so we're having like some disagreement as to like who or what Spotify is owned by. It seems like they have at least some kind of buy-in with Tencent. But I think that it would be very hard to train Spotify users to watch live streams. And for that reason, I don't think that Spotify would have a shot. The combination of having the difficulty of pushing into a market that is very competitive combined with the lack of profitability, combined with the fact that it would take a lot to train users to watch those streams, I think is not, um, like, it, like another, like, interesting thing about Spotify is, like, if you look at, like, the Joe Rogan acquisition, Joe Rogan made it very clear that all the videos that he has are going to be on Spotify. And I think even training users to watch videos through the Spotify app is hard. So much less, like, watch a live stream, I, I, I think it's difficult. So, no, I don't think that Spotify is in the game here.
Spotify is not owned by Tencent. Stop spamming me. I didn't say that it was. I said that they have. there is at least some amount of shares controlled by Tencent, not majority. We don't know how much. They're involved in some way. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who owns it. It just, it's it, like, it, these are people that are well actually in me. Anyone that says that Tencent is owned by Spotify, whatever, blah, 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 I'm going to time this shit out. It doesn't matter. We just have to look at the company as the company. It doesn't matter what the take is or whatever. Um, what matters is the, you're gatekeeping some bullshit and you're missing the point. What matters is if Spotify as a platform can create a live streaming service, regardless of who they're, regardless of who they're owned by. Why are we assuming new streaming services will be a traditional CDN? Uh, could it be newer tech PTP distributed streaming services? There are other possibilities. A CDN is by its definition a content delivery network. It just means a, a network that delivers content. It doesn't mean if it does it by PTP, a P, a PDP or distributed streaming. It doesn't matter. It's still a CDN. Um, again, God damn, I feel like I'm saying the same thing and nobody's getting the message. Netflix can't do it either. You'd have to train users. You'd have to train users to watch a live stream. That's completely different from watching a um, from watching a like a like a movie. Watching uh, the full series of like Altered Carbon is like a really different experience from watching a live stream. Also, why would Netflix do that? So, um, again, to be very clear, yes, and again, network Netflix does not have an ad network. How would they make it profitable? Thank you. Quiggy in chat is listening. Uh, the one guy in chat that's actually listening, okay? Two things. No ad network. Number two, streaming bleeds money. Live streams bleed money. They don't make money. They bleed money. And I know this may come as an incredible surprise, but companies like making money. That's what they like to do. They don't like spending money. They like making money. So it's like, hey, let's build an entire giant live streaming service and lose a shit ton of money and not be able to monetize it because we don't have an ad network. And then the other executive goes, why would we do that? And then the other Netflix executive goes, because it's cool. And then he's like, brilliant. <laughs> That's the answer. That's not how shit works, right? Like there's got to be a reason at least for these, like, maybe if it's like your fucking, your business in your garage, you don't have a reason for the shit you do, right? But like Netflix, these are heavy hitters. These guys know what they're doing. They're, they're not going to, they're not going to make a huge venture into something unless they have a pretty good idea of how it's going to produce them return on investment. Trovo is launching their partner program with a $30 million investment. They are paying considerable incentives to their partners for just hours watch. They state that their revenue will be from ads. This may be enough to attract a lot of streamers, possibly viewers from other platforms. Yeah, I, I, I think that, again, when I say that like Trovo is not a thing, I mean, I don't see it going above 5% market share. I think they can pay a lot of money, but they're just gonna do, they're going to have the same problem Mixer did. They can't get users. They don't have an ad network. It's going to take a long time to build. They don't have the sales platform within America to be able to sell to those brands. So everything that Trovo has to do is from the ground up. They got to build sales from the ground up. They got to build ads from the ground up. They've got to build the network from the ground up. They've got to build the users from the ground up. And that is going to be a fucking shit show. I would not want to work at that company as an executive. It would be so hard to do. So will they get some market share? Sure. They could buy their way into two to 3% of the market like Mixer did. But to build all of that stuff from the ground up is going to be very difficult and unrealistic. Does that make sense? Trovo can put everything through Riot Games Launcher? No. It can, they don't have that kind of independent control over Riot Games. And even if they did, that would be th that conversion is not necessarily one to one. In the same way that uh, Mixer tried to put the uh, Watch Shroud on Xbox Live and no one fucking did. Because, like, that, that call again, consumer behavior, users aren't trained to that behavior. Holy shit, stop spamming me. Um, I already answered the question about that.
Would it be better to start a Twitch channel on or Trovo? I don't know. Zero times zero is uh, still zero, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it was really hard for Mixer to convert users from Xbox Live, which was the only user base that they had, right? Steam or Valve? That was not brought up. Steam live streaming. Maybe. Um, I do think it's easier to convert a user. They've tried is the thing, right? Like there's been this like, like what they try to do is they try to like create these live streams through the store page and it doesn't work very well. So I think for a lot of reasons it wouldn't work. Basically, the again, the fundamentals that we have, like you just got to refer to the list of fundamentals, right? No ad network, large endemic user base, shit ton of investment, no first mover. Um, consumer behavior. And again, I think the number five reason is why every live streaming platform isn't profitable. I think, I don't know. Yeah, TLDR, it's really hard to build a streaming service. <laughs> why keep, uh, I need to understand why keep live streaming going if it's not profitable? Okay, great question. Absolutely excellent question. There's two reasons, really. So reason number one is that sometimes it's appropriate to have market share in something, even if it isn't profitable. So for the best example, of this is YouTube. Google bought YouTube with the expectation that would never become profitable. And in, in a lot of their shareholder letters, they said this. It, it so happens that it did become profitable later, which is great, but that wasn't something that was something that Google was okay with that not happening. The reason for that is because basically Google owning a means of conveyance, uh, a media means of conveyance like YouTube, where it's like, okay, we own the only video website in in the um, in the world, has a cost has a has a benefit to it that goes beyond money. Does that make sense? So it does cost them some amount to upkeep relative to the entire business. They're still turning a huge profit, but owning the only effective video website on the internet is fucking awesome. And so there is a lot of power that Google has by virtue of doing that. And in the same way, um, Facebook gaming, YouTube and Twitch are competing for this. And so that, that's basically why Amazon bought Twitch. Okay. Is that Amazon wants to have their foot in the live streaming market. Even if it's at a loss, they want to be there because it's a new medium, it's a new way to communicate, and it might become something later that's much more powerful than it is right now in its inception. That's reason number one. Reason number two is because it might someday become profitable. So there, at some point, the brand sponsors and ad networks might catch up, and it might be worth what you spent on it. That's the idea. Or it might generate, this is called an ROI or a return on investment, right? Um, granted, if we can stop getting XQC, if we can get Ninja and XQC and Jessica off of Twitter and they stop shitposting, maybe at some point the live streaming network is a is a professional enough industry where we can run ads, we can run brands where it becomes profitable. And it's, 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 um, it's something that in the future we could see Twitch being a profitable venture, right? Like there's enough ads running through it. There's enough brands running through it. There's enough sponsors. There's enough events that they turn over money for Amazon. So those are, and like Amazon as a company is not worried about profit at a, um, at a, uh, at, at a corporate level. Because Amazon shits out money through AWS. They shit out money through a Amazon Prime. They shit out money through their storefront. So they can take a hit for a while betting on a live streaming platform. Because one, they want to own that market. And two, because they, um, they, uh, they, they, it's basically like the cool factor. And two, it could be profitable someday.
what power does owning YouTube give? Okay. You own a platform that one fifth of the earth uses as news content, entertainment content, or informative content. What kind of power does that give you? Just think about your question for a second. That is an enormous amount of power. It's also an enormous amount of data on your users, which in of itself is very valuable in internationally in multiple different markets across the entire earth. It's insanely powerful. Google owning YouTube is insanely powerful. None of us can comprehend how much power that is. It's a spooky amount. Excuse me. It's a spooky ghosty amount. It's a J ghosty amount. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Do you see Twitch growing? Yes, just slowly. I was talking about more in 2006 when they bought it. Even then, it's still the case. But you have to realize that I think a lot of the, so a lot of the executives, so at the time it was Eric, right? And um, Sergey and uh, Larry. These are, oh, dude, in before the people that are like, we're going to get the, 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 there's going to be a lot of frogs that are like going to fucking hate me for this statement. But a lot of the top level executives in the world in front of these companies are quite literally the best of us. I realize how butt detonated this is going to get a lot of people, but like these are people that have incredible foresight into events. People like Jeff Bezos, Eric Schmidt, Sergey Brin, Larry Page, right? These are people that have predicted some of the biggest market moves. Their entire deal is this. So they saw YouTube very differently than everyone else saw YouTube in 2006, and that's why they bought it. They were able to to literally read the lines and see ahead, so that so that they understood what that platform could be. And they're not always 100 percent right, and they're not infallible. They 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 make a lot of mistakes, um, but they they are they are quite literally some of the best of humanity when it comes to making informed decisions about the future. I realize that might be hard to swallow because you want to believe that like. The hippie dude that doesn't have a job with the Cheeto dust on his keyboard is the best of us, but they're not. It, it, it is typically corporate executives at a very high level. Not always the case, right? There's a lot of old money. Um, there's a lot of like sort of, there's, there's some people that are unethical. Yes, eat the rich, et cetera. Eviscerate the proletariat. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Like, if you think, of, like, I'm not a giant fan of Elon Musk a lot of the time. You know, I, I I think he tweets out some dumb shit. But the guy has also, like, got us to space, built a fucking electric car that actually works and people buy it, um, built some fucking holes underground in Los Angeles, built a flamethrower that a lot of people bought, a funny hat, and he's a good source of memes sometimes, like stonks. That was a good meme, I guess. Okay? So, like, this single human being is contributing at a level that is much greater than, like, you or I. Right? And, and, and like, love him or hate him, he's doing a lot. <laughs> you know, like, th th that's what I mean. That's just massive ego and hubris at Devin Nash. Okay, I tell you what. Go build a fucking rocket ship. All right? Like, go accomplish that. <laughs> go build a ship that goes into space, and then it comes back down and it lands itself. And then you can criticize Elon. Okay? Or go back to your 5,000th hour of Kerbal Space Program where you still can't even get a rocket ship that isn't even real to the moon. All right? And complain from behind your keyboard. I There's a lot of stuff I don't like about Elon. But 
he built a rocket that goes to space and comes back down. That's pretty cool. I'm glad that human exists. That's neat. I like that. That's cool. CEOs defending CEOs. <laughs> Disrupt the ice industry. Yes. Not perfect. Definitely has a lot of dumb shit he does. We all do, right? But we tend to hold these... Maybe the fact that we hold people to these standards uh, is in of itself kind of an argument as to why um, it's true. You know, Be because we expect that so much of like. Yeah, if any of us were under my same microscope, as much dumb shit would come out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I don't know. We give a lot of the people it, uh, at that level, like, a lot of shit. And, okay, but, like, I don't know. <laughs> Are you invested in any blockchain projects? No, fuck blockchain, bro. I fucking lost my ass on that shit a few years ago. All right, there are no more good questions, which means I'm fucking done. That's my talk. That's my thing. I'm out of here. I'm going to go watch TV, play Path of Exile, and then I'm going to go play more Path of Exile. And then I'm going to play even more Path of Exile. Tomorrow, Envin Global panel on esports or some shit at 1.30. Uh, granted, they did give me permission to stream it. I still didn't get back from Mr. Burger if we can stream it. I assume we can. Burger seems very trustworthy. Let me check my email real quick. Oh, I got it. Devin, feel free to stream the panel if you would like to. That burger was real. That was the real burger. The setup might be a little different depending on where you get the source from, but I recommend streaming the panel as a Windows source from Brella. We got it. That's official confirmation. That means we're going to have the panel streamed. That's right. You would normally have to pay $50 for a ticket to the whole thing. We're doing it for free right here. Very nice of Envin Global to do that. Super cool. It's going to be awesome. So at 1.30 tomorrow, PM PST, we will, do, we will stream a panel, um, and then we will continue with a normal stream. How fucking cool is that? That's awesome. Hell yeah. Thank you to Envin Global for allowing uh, me to do that. That is very cool that we're going to do that. So we will stream the panel. Uh, that will be a that will be really cool. And then tomorrow we're going to work on the agency shit. And then it's Wednesday, right? Is it already Wednesday? Holy fuck, it is. Okay. So also tomorrow we have the um, uh, agency list we got to work on. And I'm way behind on that, and I'm sorry. Trihex with the two months bringing it in. Thank you. I love your YouTube. I love your channel and your outlook. Take my prime stream. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone um, who supported the stream today. You guys are fantastic with the subscriptions, the donations, the positive vibes, the being here, the follows, the joining the Discord, exclamation mark Discord, which is super awesome. It is a very good community. I hope you guys got uh, a lot out of the stream. I hope that I didn't fuck it up too bad. Um, thank you for coming to all my TED Talks. <laughs> Uh, who else do we have to thank? It was a pretty eventful day. Um, absolutely fucking crazy. An absolutely huge shout out to Kafira for the 1,000th gifted sub over all time. Novo Vu and Remy the Siren, thank you very much for the absolutely insane uh, donos and, get, and, and gifted subs. I really appreciate that you want to support the stream at that level. I actually like physically feel bad that you do. Uh, also, shout out to Samoa Stefan for the insane amount of gifted subs. Thank you, guys. You know what to do. Oh, yeah, and a shout-out to Mr. Burger for getting us to be able to live stream the um, uh, panel tomorrow because that's actually fucking awesome. So, Mr. Burger, thank you very much. That is super awesome. Um, I just got the email from Kelsey, and it looks like we're all good to go. Do you want some free tickets? We can. Yeah, I can give them out if you want. Hit me up. Email me. You know how to find me. Okay, guys, post those hearts in chat. Any hearts you want. Shout out to everybody. Thank you very much. We've got a great rest of the week for you. Thank you also, by the way, for supporting Ludwig and coming to his stream yesterday. I love that talk. We will do more talks coming up.
And thank you for all the follows. Just thank you all around. Keep the positive energy up. You guys take care of yourselves and each other. I will see you guys manana for the panel. And in the meantime, I'll see you on Discord. Until then, fare thee well.